now that uh, Danae has talked about her husband's natural hole being broken in, we can uh, we can start, start the, show. the show officially. <laughs> start the show officially. I'm so glad he doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on. Guys, that guys. Was, that was Danae's fault. Guys, guys. <laughs> we've had 39 minutes to get, get the squigglies out, all right? I'm sorry. 39 I'm a... minutes. Well, that's we've when Danae recording. decided to do her uh, weird sexy dance. I don't know what that was. <laughs> you think me wiggling my shoulders is sexy? Poor yeah, poor yes. that's what you do. Yes, You're like, today. hey, Justin, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. If mustards on tots can be sexy, sexy then yes uh, wiggling your shoulders cer- certainly can be sexy. sexy to me that was a, <laughs> oh, sure sure, uh-huh. that sure was Jonathan. Okay, like, okay, sure uh-huh mm-hmm. i was sure. imitating a follower uh, you know what, anyhow i'll, just, I'll uh, cover my camera were you eating the tater tots in a place <laughs> Oh, you know you're on Behind the Sins when you don't even get through the first sentence. A weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dicer, and I'm joined as always by Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. And Danae Hughes. Apparently sexy dancing. We write for Cinema Sins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the Cinema Sins universe as well. Uh, Yeah, we're all sexy dancing. That's just how you get through the... Get through the uh, what? What are we calling cor- this? Self <laughs> self isolation time. Corona dance. D- Danae's Danae's version of sexy dancing is like those uh, wind guys that are outside gas stations with their arms yeah, flailing around. Yeah, that is kind of what it was. <laughs> that is kind of pretty what much it what it is. Uh, this is going to be uh, as always a lot of random interruptions uh, and occasional talk about the Cinemasins universe. Uh, that's kind of what we do. It is good to see you guys again. It is one of my favorite parts of the week to check in with your beautiful faces and kind of see how things are going on and kind of talk about cinema sin stuff so <laughs> we should my do hair, a show where people can longer. see yeah everyone's got growing hair oh my goodness my gray is so gray on my sides now because it's getting longer and i just usually have short hair where it's the most gray and i'm looking at myself in the mirror i'm like my goodness like my dad has moved into my house and i didn't even <laughs> know it it's crazy I remember the first time I was at a, I was at like a waffle house with my daughter, like about a year ago. And I, I grabbed a toothpick on my way out and I was like, well, today is the day I became my dad. (laughs) (laughs) I had never grabbed a toothpick before in my life. And Uh, it was, it was just, but I had like something, something was in my tooth, man. I had to get it. Right. What? That's what (laughs) I had to pick it out. No, my my wife, uh, my wife treats her hair and, uh, she obviously right now she's not going to see anybody. She's like, I'm just going to let it go gray. Yes. It's so gorgeous. That's cool. I I love gray hair. I love my gray hair. I actually am enjoying seeing it. But yeah, there's. Um, I, th- I think gray hair is a really beautiful thing. So I'm, I'm glad your wife's made that call. Yeah, it's super in too because people are actually dyeing their hair gray. Yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting. So now's the time to do it, you know. It's like people that never. No, that's not even a good comparison. Mine. I was gonna say something about holes in jeans, but that doesn't even make any sense. So, <laughs> uh, that it's right terrible. there, my friends, is the writing process. Yeah, <laughs> no you're kidding. hearing right. it live. Well, right. it's just for some reason I was thinking about when people used to buy jeans that already had holes in them, and I just even as a kid I thought that was weird. Yeah, I'm like, I can. No. I've got scissors. I can see the connection. I can see the connection. Yeah, I don't know. My husband literally uh, has a pair of je- of jeans that has a natural hole that's just started in the in the knee. Yeah. And and I said, "Oh, you did it! Like you broke one in. You have like a legit. <laughs> that's a legit hole. That's not one that's bought store bought." He said, "Yeah, I got to throw them out now." Because he's not a hole in the jeans guy. I, well, I'm not really either. So that's probably why I never really got it. Well, but, I, but if I did want to be a hole in the jean guy, I well, just would have cut it. Now that uh, Danae has talked about her husband's natural hole being broken in, we can uh, we can start, start the, the show. Start the show officially. <laughs> start the show officially. I'm so glad uh, he doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> what was I wa- oh, never mind. I can't talk about that. That's a future episode of something we're doing. But uh, all right, let's get into the sin side scoop. What's he building in there? We're going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we're sending as well. Uh, we will begin with TV sins, still sending the SpongeBob. We're not quite done with SpongeBob yet. We've got one more, uh, but uh, I had never seen this one, and you guys send it, and so I had the fun experience of you know watching SpongeBob in bits and pieces, which I'm going to be honest, probably just as good as watching the episode. You know what I mean? Well, like we, it's not like the episodes like... are meant to be philosophical treatises on something. You know, it's just. 
fun. Was this the one that was like like nine minutes? So I mean, it was like almost the length of the the episode. So. This was a an interesting one because on the schedule it said that there was it was an A B situation. So we actually mm-hmm. thought going into sending this one that there was a part A and a part B. And I watched it, and they were completely unrelated. The one that we were we were going to do Crabby Land and also the camping episode. Um, but after watching them and realizing that they were not related, I decided to suggest that maybe the camping episode was more interesting mm-hmm. of a sending experience where, you know, SpongeBob and Patrick want to go camping and Squidward thinks he's going to have silence, but they really just camp in between the two houses. And he goes over to complain, ends up joining them. And then the shenanigans is essentially that Patrick and uh, SpongeBob read these tabloids about sea bear attacks and mm-hmm. Squidward doesn't believe that the sea bear is real. And so when uh, uh, SpongeBob and Patrick are telling him all the things he shouldn't do to attract a sea bear, he puts all those things on and does all those crazy things. And then, of course, this sea bear ends up actually coming and attacking him and multiple times. Yeah. He's multiple, multiple times. And then, of course, Cecilia. So that that was the kind of premise of this episode. It should, Chris, been, it should have been Chris a sea really feedback on this one. No. Okay, so Danae, I'm almost positive. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the one where he said, this is one of the most annoying things I've ever watched. Wasn't it this one? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he it, did. It kind of is. It, no, he it, said, um, this is the most annoying episode of television I've ever watched. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might be a little much, although he probably watches a lot better television than I do. But um, but yeah, it, was, it wasn't great. It wasn't my favorite. Um, Listen, I, if you're not into it, you're not going to have patience for it if you're not into it it's gonna great on you chastised for oh did you well no i mean not me personally i did write that sin about him being terrible but that was also a a cinema sins narrator thing or tv sins narrator thing that's the thing i mean i do put my opinion in these things we do do that but i do i do make it a little more crazier because i'm assuming you know we're we're speaking as the narrator well it's actually one Uh, of my my favorite part of uh those comments we're seeing people make the connection between between sinning Squidward for being so awful and then also that the narrator is aware on some level that he kind of is Squidward (laughs) at the same time. I actually, yeah, I have that pinned for my comment section because I wanted to talk more about that. Um, So I want to circle back to that specifically when we get to the comment section. All right, we'll hold that for the comment section. But it was one of my favorite things going on there. And there is even a, a different discussion elsewhere. I don't think it's in this video. It's in one of the other videos. And get this. A discussion on YouTube between two people, one who who thinks CinemaSins isn't very good and another who uh, loves what we do, having a civil conversation about their disagreement on, you know, our, the things we do. And this I read was the, in the comments? Yes. For- yeah. And I was like reading what? through this and I was I was really impressed with just the discourse that was going on and the one person saying, you know, well, of course they have truth in some of what they do because all comedy comes from a good place of truth. But what they're trying to do is make you laugh laugh and then he would come back and say yeah but i don't think it's funny and of course i've always said that's if you know if you don't think it's yeah, funny absolutely. then it's subjective man. yeah it's totally you know subjective so but yeah it was interesting yeah. i just i just i find it interesting though i i typically don't watch things that i don't enjoy so i always i just always find it interesting the amount of comments and i'm like why why did you watch i'm glad you watched it thank you you know <laughs> yeah. thank you for the for the watch but like i, I just i don't know it's weird yeah. Anyways, it's I like, found all that interesting. But we, yeah, we no, get... that's really cool though. I I do like that's one thing about reading comment sections that's been interesting is that there is some good in there. Uh, I thought find. this episode was interesting too uh, from a writing perspective uh, because I did learn a lot about Squidward in this one, and we talk about how how much we hate on him, which I guess I probably should wait on because I could talk about writing the sin because I know Aaron, you really want to start. Oh no, I I don't have to. I mean, generally we just start with the person who didn't write on it. So you know. Yeah, I but can... that I mean, like, who likes rules? Man? I'm not started at all this week. <laughs> not you. It's certainly not you, Danae. Go ahead. No, for real. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and not Jonathan this week because he doesn't get to start on anything because he wrote on every single video this week. Except for music video stuff. Uh, but anyhow, uh, great job, guys. I really like this. Uh, the backpack observation was one of my favorites. The fact that SpongeBob has no shoulders, like, why even wear a backpack? Uh, the toilet observation that it's just like a couple rows of bamboo uh, and the way that was played out was good. Um, the groceries, Vaseline and condoms line uh, <laughs> really made me laugh. 
that was yeah. that was weird. That worked out really well because I, I when I was writing, I wrote that sin, and then like literally the next thing he says is, you know, how do I get inside? Yes, and, I was like, and you're oh, like, that's shit. what the Vaseline is for. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, it worked really really well. And uh, the is it a sea nurse bear uh, also made me laugh. Uh, yeah, Danae Danae massaged that one. That was I wrote I know I well she noticed the cast too, but. I had written yeah. something, mm-hmm. and then she added that to it, which made it even better. Well, it's a callback to we the had, very we first. We had a lot of sins, actually. We had to cut a lot on this one. This was a pretty easy one. I mean, there was a lot of material, so you you picked the right one, I think, out of the two. Yeah. there. It was a kind of a callback to when we send the pilot of SpongeBob. There's a bus driver that gets hit by a balloon several times, and then all of a sudden uh, has a cast on. And it's just like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when that's, exactly, he... that's exactly what I was doing. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I wrote on that one. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, great job. I really enjoyed it. Um, what else did you guys want to talk about from the video? Go ahead, Jonathan. You're drinking. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was a, that was good timing. I don't think I had much. I, hold on a second. Let me see if there's anything we haven't covered. Um, uh... No, it was fun. It was a really fun one to work on. Like I said, it was it was a pretty it went pretty quickly, and uh, we had a ton of. I mean, like for 12 minutes, like we both had like. 20 plus sins and mm-hmm. um and then chris i did yeah chris wrote, yeah we already mentioned chris chris had a had some stuff too so it uh yeah, it, it was fun. chris he wrote one the he wrote one of my favorite ones the um uh, where squidward's like reacting at the very beginning and his sin was like if you've got books and hot tea all and all that down here you have to have earplugs and a headphones you know so yeah. i really like that just that pointing awesome. that out did anyone also- mention the toilet the toilet <laughs> <laughs> Um, Squidward's interesting on this one because he is the kind of person who draws on calendars. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be that person. Because, you know, there's like, I'll watch Instagram stories of people who get a calendar and then they get out their markers and their stickers and they do this whole like visual explosion of organization and beauty and i want to do that but instead i'm the grab the nearest potentially working pen not sure scribble something down that's completely illegible come back to it later what the hell is it it's not even on the right day (laughs) scratch it off put an arrow over to the correct day like that's me so whenever i saw the little visual there i was like okay yeah that that felt like that came from some kind of personal experience yeah that felt real that felt very real i i'm I'm looking at our 2019 wall calendar for uh, for Aaron and Danae, and uh, Danae very much pushed for a wall calendar. We need a I wall calendar so, so we can use it and put stuff on there and see it in front of us. And uh, yeah, there's nothing on that calendar. There's nothing uh, on there. No, because then I get worried about putting stuff on there because then I, I'm going to mess it up. Uh, I'm a digital calendar person yeah, for sure. For, That's yeah. much much easier. Uh, I also really enjoyed writing the. Do you know how hard it is to spit when? saying the word bum yeah. um i sometimes things just hit you whatever you're writing and it's like that's really that funny. was one of I my don't... favorite things and i was only holding it for the comment section because there was a, a fun comment about it um but yeah I, I loved that as well i i think what i liked about it is that it, it you can spit while saying the word bum and i know that because i then spent the next three minutes trying um to spit while saying the word bum and the reason I kept it in my script is thinking about all the people who are going to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, you know, and you were probably playing off that Outlander scent about the Gleek. And, and yes. then you thought about so when they weird. were on the when they were on the bus in the pilot episode of SpongeBob. And it just so came weird. Together. Yeah, yeah, right. I remember that like it was yesterday. No, no, no. That uh, literally is a callback to another sin from SpongeBob. There was a spit <laughs> sin two episodes ago in SpongeBob where, oh my and, God. and it was Squidward was spitting, and we talked about how is there spit falling to gravity in the water? Shouldn't it be floating how in front of this? him? Do you know when I, I will? We'll talk about this when we get there. But we have another repeat sin. Um, it starts in this do. episode. It, it's in this one, and then it comes over into the next one. So we'll talk about that. Uh, the other one that I wanted to mention that I really enjoyed was the no one will be seated as SpongeBob uses his last remaining functioning brain cell to formulate a simple thought. I really liked writing that one. <laughs> oh, what, really was the one, that one. what was the one that was like, me? That one made me laugh, <laughs> okay, too. That's that, one... the, that's, that was the Squidward one, the yeah. self-referential Squidward, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was a fun episode, for sure. Great stuff. Uh, let's move on to Better Call Saul Uno. Uh, which, by the way, Spanish for one, in case you didn't oh, know that. Okay. Um, not necessarily. I just thought just, it was a game. That, yeah, not that, that would have been good to know when number? I was writing the script. Yeah, not a reference to the card something. game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Many people don't know this. It is actually a Spanish word for the number one. Oh, um, okay. So, which, well, come to think of it, in that game, when you're down to one card, what do you say? You say uno. 
Oh, see? I thought it was like, see? yes! <laughs> That's right. Uh, uh, I love this show so very much. Um, I am all in on Vince Gilligan and what he's done with Breaking Bad in Better Call Saul. Uh, so it was really fun to kind of look at this again. This was a Dicer Watkins script. So Jonathan and I wrote on this. Um, I, going back and revisiting this, was reminded how much ground this show has covered in four seasons uh, because it really has invested itself in several different kind of deep storylines. You know, it started off with the brother stuff, and that stuff is resolved in the first couple seasons, but it also continues to carry its weight into the future seasons. And I just, I just going back was really reminded of how meticulous this show is and just how smart it is. Cool. I watched it. Uh, I've seen this pilot a few times because I've tried to start watching this show a few times and I've only gotten like five or six episodes in, <laughs> but uh, it's nothing. Not, I don't dislike it, but for whatever reason, I just, it's not, I guess it's not connecting with me the way it does some people. Um, I don't want to have sex with it like Aaron does. Oh, yes. Um, what really helped me writing the script was in the, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, in the SpongeBob pilot, there was this part <laughs> where they were driving a bus. Oh, is and, that when he spit? Because I saw that scene. <laughs> No, but no, this was this was really interesting to work on. These Vince Gilligan uh, Breaking Bad was really hard and this followed suit. This was these have been really tough ones to to send because and it's it's not because nothing happens, but I I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe cuz a lot of it just feels like you're just that's the point, you know, when you're trying to send it. Um, so you have to get a little creative. But uh, but this ended up being a really fun one to work on once we got into the uh, combination process, collaborative process. Yeah. I did not have as much fun writing it by myself, I don't think. <laughs> I, I struggled with it a little bit. But, but, you but didn't I felt, be I felt better about it once, you know, we started working on it. Once we went from Uno to Duo. <laughs> to Duo. Hey, there is a DOS game, by the way. My daughter has it. It's uh, it's it's basically Uno. But, uh, it's oh, it's Dose. not about like, like med- medicine doses? Oh, no. Okay. I thought I thought maybe it was a drinking game with Dos Equis, but uh... no, it's the sequel to Uno. Oh, it's a card fair game. Enough. Fair yeah. enough. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just think. Uh, do we think that the creators and directors of great TV, like I, I say this is, and some others would say this is, should they be mentioned in the same breath as great movie directors now? Has TV become that prestige where you can mention Vince Gilligan in the same breath as like Damien Chazelle or? Oh, no, I think well, Damien Chazelle is about to have his own show though I, in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I think it's just different. I mean, I yeah. Why? I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I think we're kind of reaching that point yeah. where you can kind of be in in just as much awe of the skill from Vince Gilligan and what he's doing in these shows as you can from Alex Garland, you know, in Ex Machina or whatever. So, yeah, I think so. But, yeah, it's interesting how he ties everything together. I mean, I think that's just him, you know, I mean, he's just a smart guy. But I because I don't think this was like I don't remember. I, I didn't I don't I didn't do a lot of research into this. I feel like I've heard this in the past. This was not the first idea for a spinoff. Oh, no. The first idea was a yeah. comedy. The first idea oh, was to right. do a, yeah. like a case of the week kind of comedy kind of thing. And I'm so yeah. glad they went this route instead. It's just oh, so yeah, much more. Absolutely. I don't know. There's just so much more you can invest in it. Um, although comedy is fun, too. I like comedy. But I assume that beginning is like that's a decent ways in the future. Like, do we like do we not get to that point for quite a while or have they not gotten to that point yet? The first episode of every season starts in black and white in the future and okay. continues that story. Uh, and those segments get progressively longer each season. Um, so we haven't, but you haven't reached that timestamp. No, we've learned some more things about what's happening in the future, but you know, so that's we, post. But that's obviously post Breaking Bad, correct. right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Danae, why don't you kick us off since you didn't write on this one? Oh, cool. Yeah, you don't want to know if I've seen the show. I see. I'll just jump right <laughs> well, in. Well, I mean, I guess people could use a drink. Uh, have you watched the show, uh, Danae? N- no. Okay, take not. a drink. Okay, just fair wanted enough. To, <laughs> just wanted to get that out there. I liked it. I really enjoyed it a lot. The roll commercials, r- roll them already. R- roll, roll. Oh, that was really fun. Yeah. Um, the whole repetitive thing. The hand dryers. Um, can we talk about hand dryers for a second? Sure. They're so disgusting. They're the worst. They're so nasty. So as I'm watching that particular part, it's like it is better for me. I just like I'll just kind of shake the water off. And then I usually just use my own clothing to wipe my hands off anymore. What, yeah. what I don't is it, like what my, is it about hand dryers that gross you out? It's just blowing shit on you. Pretty yeah, much. Okay, that makes I, I think public restrooms are just disgusting they're so gross in, in general. And hopefully this this if anything, this pandemic uh, we'll get some cleaner bathrooms in the future. <laughs> some cleaner public I, restrooms, maybe. I wouldn't trust it. I yeah, I use I use my shirt 
to lift up and open the handle if there's no paper towels anywhere. Oh, Otherwise, yeah, I yeah, guard yeah, yeah. my hand with paper yeah. towels. Um, I don't want I don't want you to get the visual like I take a paper towel and I just like wrap it around my hand until it looks like a gigantic Q-tip. I don't do that. I just do one like one paper layer between me and surfaces is, is, yeah, is fine. I, that's what I do. That's what a lot of people do, I think. But when it comes to the blow dryer, if there's no option other than a blow dryer to dry my hands, I just use my clothes. Yeah. I just want to. Anyway, I mean, the only thing worse than that, I don't even know if women's restrooms ever have these, but some older like bars and stuff, you'll still go into these men's restrooms where they have like the, I don't know how else to describe it, except it looks like a cloth diaper. No. And it just like, do you know what I'm talking about? The oh, recy- yeah. That recycles yes. itself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Those things that, are so bad. That's like that and like soap on a rope. Like, oh. fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also liked you guys uh, bringing up how the urinal puck got onto the floor because for me, that this is an weird. example of where I don't notice that stuff because I don't go in there. I, that's, I don't even, I didn't even know that they were called urinal pucks. That was kind of fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Like, cool. Like a puck, I like it. hockey puck. I wrote a few things and nothing was really, uh, was really working. So I just got rid of it. And that was one of those. I was just like, I think Aaron's going to write something about that. So I'm going <laughs> to let this go. And if he doesn't, I had a note about it, but he did. So it was interesting. Cause there's all this, you know, references of how it could have gotten onto the floor. Mm-hmm. And, and as I'm listening to this and experiencing the sin, I'm thinking like, would I rather pee against a wall where there's like a game you can play with a hockey puck <laughs> or have to yeah, set that's what they my, are. or have to set my naked ass onto somebody else's piss in a toilet? And my answer is I want to play a hockey puck game. So I feel <laughs> once again, you know, that maybe I mean, it'd be just easier if I had a penis. I don't, that won't and be the last stupid, time I say like, that. Like, what are those, what are those, those are like, are they, what are those pucks for? I, I don't, I mean, I guess I know, they're like, they're like, uh, they're not odor eaters, are they? They're yeah, just, they're deodorizers. Yeah. Are, mm-hmm. Oh, they're deodorizers? Okay. Yeah. I knew there was some kind of chemical involvement, but I never really yeah. thought they, much about it. There may be a it. cleaning element to them as well, but it's mostly yeah. the deodorizer kind of thing. They're not actually for games, Ur- but I'm sure it is. Urinals are fine in, in concept, but the problem, although, but the problem is, is that I don't know, like urinal etiquette, it, there's like is not universally followed very well. So right, people try to have conversations with you, or that happens in women's restrooms uh, a lot too. And more people often, like bring in, like put drinks and food on top of the urine. Oh, so, oh gross! Ugh. Yeah. More often now, the thing that that's happening more frequently is people are having continuing their conversations on the phone in the next stall, which is really mm. fascinating. There's there's actually there's actually been this like temptation that's been rising up inside of me to make inappropriate fart sounds with my like with my hands and stuff just to disrupt conversation and be a troll but i haven't actually <laughs> done that yet i'll keep you well, you can't make those so those sounds naturally in that environment like no 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 <laughs> i don't i don't fart in public if i can help it <laughs> you just make <laughs> as the... soon as i get home it's a massive blowout but out in public <laughs> you'd, close the door you, in my car you'd rather make the fake I, and... <laughs> noises as if you are when you I could can't just fart do on it. Command. I can't fart on command, but I can make a fart noise on command. Yeah, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Um, and then my my, the, my favorite thing to point out is that we have a double week of making staff meeting references oh, unintentionally, yeah. uh, both in SpongeBob and also in Better Call Saul. We make two staff meeting references. And here's the crazy thing. Our staff meeting, when the episode for BTS comes out this week, our staff meeting is this morning. So on the same week... <laughs> that we're talking about it. We have two staff meeting references out of the blue. We'll so probably really... be in our staff meeting when it drops. <laughs> so I really enjoyed it. I actually linked them directly to our staff meeting Slack channel and said, hey, you guys need to come prepared by watching these scenes. <laughs> so <laughs> That's right. I'm really hoping Chris actually does. That was Yeah, that was one of my favorite uh, yeah. bits was the Chris. What is it? Is it Chris at every staff meeting? <laughs> yeah. Every staff meeting. <laughs> yeah. So like he's just, he's just like yelling. He's like doing network work quotes and stuff yeah yeah and Anyways. it's true that's what makes it even more fun is it's absolutely true it's not exaggerated at all um what about you jonathan anything else you wanted to mention um i liked the um, the deal about the escalator i thought was really funny <laughs> where it was just like i feel like it, i made a bad purchase in this mall yeah yeah uh, i liked how you wrote the thing about the checks too because you were just like clearly they're not going to have like routing and banking information but you're like but checks should have that shit <laughs> so it's like we're gonna send it anyways ass based crevasses uh obviously was was very funny but yeah, yeah that's all i had uh i i liked the um the moment where where somebody says something about yes i grounded myself 
and uh, and then making it you know to uh, parenting circa 2020 because we're yes. all grounding yeah. ourselves uh, yeah, right now. Yeah, that was good. Uh, so I did enjoy that, and I also really. Really glad that we got a sin removal for the acting in this show uh, because Michael McKean is so oh, underrated he's so and he's yeah. so good and he just brings it in this show. Um, well, and he's so known for comedy, right? right I mean, that's yeah. such a that's such an. I mean, I, you know, he's a good actor. I mean, it, well, and here's the thing. I mean, I don't know why people don't realize this. If you're good at acting in comedies, you're a hell of an actor. Yeah, no, <laughs> because for that's real. one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, um, so it shouldn't be a surprise, but it seems to shock people. Like when you know Jim Carrey does a dramatic role or Will Ferrell does a dramatic role, right? Uh, so, but yeah, no, Michael McKean's out outstanding in or, this show. You know, uh, one of our greatest actors of all time, Tom Hanks, started in comedies. You know. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's I mean, even go back to like Chaplin or you right? know, whoever. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, so yeah, other than that, I think everybody mentioned everything. Uh, I was glad we got to take a look at it. It's not the kind of show that I think we'll probably sin again. You know, there's not a lot of clamoring for it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but I was glad we got a chance to take a look at the pilot. Uh, cause I know yeah, a lot of people sure. love the show. Yep. Uh, all right, let's move on to music video sins. Uh, dropped the song "We Are Young" from the band Fun. Uh, this is uh, what was this like early 2010s, mm-hmm. like somewhere in that range. Yep. Uh, and I was doing some prep for the show today, yesterday, and that song has been in my brain since. Uh, it will not <laughs> yeah. leave. It is such an earworm. It's yeah. crazy I don't know, I don't how even great know if that I like chorus it, is, but. I don't know if I like it, but it it doesn't go away. Like I mean, yeah, you you'll you'll think about it for a while. That it's chorus like, is just it's just crack cocaine for the brain. It's yeah. just it's great. Yeah. That's why it There's, was such a huge hit. There are so many songs though that when you drill down into the lyrics, they're really really uncomfortably inappropriate. Like I can't remember the one. I I won't remember one hundred percent. Me so like, horny. Where, like where there's a like he's stalking her is a really famous oh, one. Oh, the uh, every every breath you take. The yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, it's, where which it is which is a great song, but yeah. but but a lot of people for the longest there's people that think it's like a love song and you're like <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, and this seemed to be one of those. It was in the comments quite a yeah. bit of of what this song is about. I think it was domestic abuse was something that was like written about, and mm-hmm. that was really interesting. I, I I think it's interesting that this one is coming out of our archives. I don't know how much like the, it's a situation where we had another uh, video planned, and then we had to do a little switcheroo, and this one mm-hmm. had been kind of waiting for its turn, and so mm-hmm. here it is coming out to the daylight. Uh, a lot of the comments are like, "This is an older one," but a lot of love for it too. Um, so I thought that was interesting. It also said uh, when it was written, uh, one of the sins was that it was um, interesting to hear a beginning of the decade like sin because yeah. we're in the beginning of a new decade when yeah. it actually hit our channel. But it was written for like last decade. <laughs> so <laughs> yep. <laughs> things like that sometimes happen when we release videos. Um, Absolutely. Well, I mean, it's just like if you listen to a video that came out a year or ago, yeah. you know, same thing. So, yeah. But it's wasn't. It, but I like that it was all still relevant the the jokes were still really fun um barrett said he loved the song and it's one of the catchiest choruses of all time so he's totally yeah totally on with us he said you know janelle monae was a waste of they they wasted her uh i forgot she was i mean because i don't think i really knew who she was at the time so like when when i remember when a few months ago when when we did this edit um i was like she popped up in and i was like that's janelle monae (laughs) well i think at the time it was just a tightrope right her only song at the time was tightrope and and it'd been like a huge hit she wasn't like huge yet i mean she was good i think she i well that's not fair i think she probably was well known but like i i did not know who she was yeah at the yeah time. um he also just i mean not not a lot more but that this video is the similar to the other ones we do which is that the video seems to not match the song mm-hmm. which is just one of the things we get to talk about every week you know it kind seems. of matches it more than most though because there's something very fun. destructive about yeah. the the quote-unquote fun that they're having like this is a song like you said as you dig deeper that it that's kind of about when you're young that you don't think ahead to consequences that you know there's this this kind of thing where it's like yeah i know i'm a jerk yeah i know i'm being awful yeah i know getting drunk isn't good for me but we're we're young what do you expect kind of thing and that's kind of what the the song is saying it's not necessarily a message i agree with 
you know, like I've talked about with movies and stuff, I don't identify with that. Like I didn't feel like I had to party to have fun or do anything destructive to have fun. But the video itself does kind of match that. You know, it is it is very destructive. It's just not dealing with like the real depth of right. like abuse and harm and those kind of things uh, that it probably should be. Um, that's kind of in the lyrics. But it is interesting, though, to look back on stuff like that. Like if you were somebody who partied and drank a lot, which I did, and now I'm just like, Ugh, how did I like like how did I do that? <laughs> 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 like that sounds awful. Like you know, I hear all these people like people are treating like thank God you know even with this with the self isolation they're like thank God for alcohol and I'm like oh that would be horrible if I had alcohol in my house right now <laughs> like just even the thought of that you know uh, but you know uh, yeah no I I think that's definitely something you can get out of the song though it's interesting. I did have a question though we did we just talk about ska dancing last was it last week? Okay, I couldn't remember if that was with the two of you or with somebody else. That was okay. you guys about the, Same. the guy dancing? Yeah. Same. I had mentioned yeah. it. Because you mentioned your brother did the ska dancing, right? Yeah, well, because there was okay. the guy in one of the, in the, uh, one of, there was the guy in Clueless. I had just seen Clueless. And so, and then there was a mention in one of our other videos of the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones guy. Okay. Um, which That's is, what it was. Which is kind of one of those I things. I couldn't remember, so. but then I'm watching it and then there's that sin about the ska dance reference yeah. and I'm like, Oh, weird. I'm in this weird space, man. I don't know where I heard this. <laughs> well, Somehow. and it's kind of one of those things, too, because I'm like, did I talk about Ska with Aaron and Danae? Like, that I doesn't know. make sense. It's just I'm weird. Like, how, it's- do, <laughs> how do I know that uh, Aaron's brother used to jump up on stage and dance? <laughs> can we call that? Can we call that Day Ska v- View? Day Ska View? Does that, does <laughs> yes. that work? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, uh, as far as the song itself goes, um, I do, ha- I have some issues with the message, but I, I love the, the melody. Like it's just, it's an earworm. So yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, let's talk about the video itself. Um, the, the, the slow motion causing Zack Snyder to spontaneously orgasm, uh, yeah. made me giggle. I thought that was great. Uh, the, uh, the aftermath, uh, questions about the, the woman as she was leaving. Like, I need to know more yeah. about this woman. <laughs> who just incited yeah. this riot and is now walking away unscathed yeah. like yep so great i love that so much and i will say i did do some research and a lot of the quote unquote actors the extras the the participants in this video yeah. w- were injured like they had bruises and scratches and like they really went for it the band was fine they were kind of in a separate area oh, when it was filmed uh but oh, the people man. who did the big scene they they actually came away with some injuries so well, yeah. and, I, and i guess the lead singer i guess he's a producer now because there was that one sin about yeah. you know he's not producing a taylor swift track here you know so i, I assume that's what that was yeah. in reference to i didn't look into it you know yeah, Bear totally. wrote it but uh but uh yeah no that was interesting and um i loved the um uh the sending that anyone would use ms internet explorer was funny uh, yeah you know I, but had what's, a, what's, I had a windows phone i was gonna say it's a windows phone people don't yeah. remember windows phones yeah uh, so that was so it's still fine to send that but oh, that, of course. that was the only uh that was really your only option <laughs> Yeah, that's right. On Windows phones. And Windows phones were terrible, by the way. Worst phone I've ever had. That's what I've heard. Uh, flip phones, like back in the day, like sliders and stuff were so much better than a Windows phone. Um, and then uh, I like, can we have a more obvious metaphor than the tens killing fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that was really funny because you, know you don't see them anymore. Yeah. What about you, Danae? I already mentioned them. Those were some of my tops. Very nice. Uh, well done again. Enjoyed that one. Uh, ready to get into the cinema sins now, and we'll start with Jumanji: The Next Level. Uh, oh boy! Oh boy! This was a uh, Cher Watkins uh, script, so Barrett and Jonathan wrote on this one. Uh, let's talk about the movie itself first. Uh, this movie is just such a failure of imagination. It's just such a, a you know to take something that was fun and you know audiences enjoyed and then completely misunderstand what people enjoyed about the first one or at least misunderstood what I enjoyed about the first one. Um <laughs> how dare it, they not make a movie the second you? one you mean? Yeah, I'm just saying the second when they or made the, previ- the second the one the previous one, right? Yeah, when they made the yes, I'm sorry, correct. No, I'm just I, No, it does, no cuz you might be talking about the Robin Williams. No, no absolutely. Idea, that's what I was asking. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct to make that distinction. I think it's one of those crazy weird things I see these two yeah. movies as separate from the first Jumanji oh, movie. Oh, I do too. Um, even though they are literally sequels. The, the, they're not reboots. Yeah. The, these are no. sequels to that original yeah. Jumanji movie. So it really Absolutely. should count. 
Um, I just, my brain doesn't do it well, for some yeah, reason. Well, and, yeah, and the fact that, I mean, the B.B. Newworth character is in this movie from well, the from the, Robert, from the 95 one. And we didn't have any sins on it, but there is a uh, post credit scene in this that is even more explicitly uh, about the first Jumanji yeah. movie uh, yeah, as well. We I, I don't remember if we did and we got rid of them or not, but no, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't end up with anything on that. Yeah, this movie, I don't know. I saw in the theater and Chris and I reviewed it, but we did it like obviously like the day after we saw saw it which is always tough and i think we gave it like semi-passable like because kevin hart's really good in he this. is he's really good like, in it he actually gives a performance like he's not just being kevin hart his like, danny glover he, is yeah. legit it's yeah. really good yeah well and just that that type of character like everyone's got like that uncle or grandfather or whatever mm-hmm. that, that talks like that and is really like like you know it's so like so slow with their stories my wife's uncle actually uh oh my god i mean he'll just I mean, he's the nicest guy in the world, but like he spent like 20 minutes one day talking to me about pens. And <laughs> I've, oh my God. I mean, uh, honestly, but, uh, pens are amazing. There's so many different kinds. I was going to say, it sounds it like an A. <laughs> you, well, do you remember the exact birdcage, though? Do you remember the birdcage oh, yeah. with Gene Hackman where he's talking about how they drove home and the the leaves were changing colors? And that that's kind of what Chris, that's kind of what Kevin Hart's doing in this movie. And it's, it's really funny. So there was enough there, but then watching it, and so I think I gave it like a B minus or C plus, but watching it, I do not watch it again. I mean, it, every anything that remotely held up for me, and I mean, it, that was remotely good for me the first time did not work on me at all the second time. And this movie takes so long to get going. It's oh, it's, that way. it's horrible. Oh, it's it's oh just so God. poorly structured. It's so, There's no thought that has gone into this plot. There's no thought that no. has gone into, and that's the thing about a movie like this. It's kind of interesting with what we do is, is, you know, we've talked about this before. When you sin something, you're not necessarily saying something is bad because of a sin. It doesn't always work that way. It's not a one-to-one ratio. In a movie like this, yeah. I can go to the movie theater and I have can have a good time. And I did. I laughed a little bit. I enjoyed Kevin Hart's performance. Yeah. It was, you know, it's just, it was inoffensive. It was just kind of fun. But even in watching it, I was like, I know this doesn't hold up. And I know when we're, we sin this, it's going yeah. to completely fall apart like a house of cards. And then you, you start to actually think about this stuff and you know the everything just falls apart it's just you know you it's not that you have to put the uh the real thinking into the plot and make sure everything works out for a movie to be good but if you don't do that man the other stuff better be excellent because it just it gets hard to watch sometimes yeah no it is and then and the, are we talking about jumanji or night at the museum because i think that <laughs> applies to both <laughs> I oh, think Night man. at the Museum is a little bit better, but we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're not Did wrong. Did Barrett, I don't want to steal anything from Barrett. Did he write in anything about this? Yeah, just but just a real brief thought. He thought okay. that this movie was disappointing. Um, he really liked the last one, but this one was so full of bad impressions that I couldn't get into it, he said. Uh, the game didn't make sense. The stakes were minimal, and I really didn't feel like everyone was, uh, oh, and it felt like everyone was phoning in. Well, I was yeah, he, I was really glad you guys went hard at the um, the rules of the universe, specifically related to them all falling in that pond and getting the yeah. exact character they wanted. That was the biggest pond of convenience ever. And even in watching it the first time, I was like, that's just so lazy. Just so lazy. Well, and we had a hard time. Be- well, not a hard time, but we had just there was so much to sin about the gameplay. Just like although some people in the YouTube comments made some comments about this that I'm, I don't know if I copied any of those over. I think I'm going to copy a couple of them. But people were saying, well, I mean, you know, because we kept it, it kept seeming like each character was so vital, especially the horse. The horse ended up being so vital to the movie, to the game itself. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what if, I mean, what if the horse hadn't been there? Like (laughs) the horse almost wasn't there. So like, I mean, Chris even brought that up immediately when we reviewed it. He was just like, I don't understand. Like you have to have the horse to win the game. Mm -hmm. But like, what if there, and it's like, so does this movie, does that mean like eight people have to play this? It just, everything about the game just makes no sense to me, but I'm not a gamer because one of the things we did get, we did get commented on was uh we wrote the sin about you know we, we know have you ever played a game where somebody sprains their ankle <laughs> and like then the, apparently the, there is some freaking game where you can like break your leg no and you, and I, it's, it's like it's kind of funny terrible because the comments are are basically just yeah this game yeah this game yeah, yeah this game it's like all these gamers no examples 
That doesn't mm-hmm. mean that game's fun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the whole point of The Sim. It was like, why would you want to play a character that sprains his ankle? But yeah, that was the main thing. I mean, we were just, just the way the game itself worked and um, and just, you know, the gameplay itself. Like, there was that scene with the bridges and it was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he knows geometry. But then it that didn't even matter because then the bridges started going everywhere. Yeah. So like his geometry. That's what skills, geometry does. It goes everywhere. That, that's <laughs> very true. confusing. That's true. Well, yeah. it's not so but, much that uh, the geometry wouldn't help with something like that. It's just that the movie doesn't care to show us how. Yeah. The movie and it is wouldn't not, help you fight monkeys. The the movie is not interested at all in following through on its presuppositions. Right. It's saying, okay, yeah. you're good at geometry, so you'll be able to do a you know a, a map a pattern of how to get through bridges. And then bridges are falling apart, and monkeys are attacking. Yeah. And the movie's like, ah, eh, forget that whole thing. We're just gonna run. <laughs> and then and my, the worst part for me was almost the worst part was when the characters would die they would just show up at random places and it's like i know enough about video games to know that you go back at the at the least you go back to the beginning of wherever you are right you know and like but like that one where uh i can't even think of her name uh, from doctor who and guardians of the galaxy all of a sudden her name escapes me but uh on the bridge scene she falls back down in the middle of all those bridges and could very easily just die Again. You know? Yeah. 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 Again. Yeah. And, um, and I was uh, just pretending like I was writing on it and I was like, you know, oh, <laughs> but we, so we, I did a little quick Google search like games yeah. where you can sprain your ankle and like the top <laughs> results are ankle sprain getting back in the game. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm not an athlete. I when, just... <laughs> um, Karen Gillan, by yeah, the way. Karen Gillan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But we had, yeah, m- I think uh, Martha is her name. Why'd you say that? Martha name? name? <laughs> Um, but uh, that was so we had a lot of sins. So we had we actually and we even had to cut some after it, the video was made because some of those we didn't even notice until we watched the video and it was like whoa those are back to back and those are very similar. Uh, you couldn't really tell in the script phase. So that if any, if we had a problem at all, it was just trying not to do too many about the game itself. But uh, hey, sorry about the squeaking. <laughs> no, you're fine. And then just the old people cliches, just all that nonsense. Like they couldn't, like them still not realizing they were in a game like an hour and a half into it was just dumb. Yeah. So we had to kind of pull back on calling out all that kind of, because I mean, you know, the crap about like, oh, is that my, is that my nephew from, or is that Barbara's son? It was just, ugh. Yeah. It's not a good movie. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it, it is, it is actively uh, upsetting the second you start to think about any part of it, you know? Uh, and so that's, that's, you know, makes, makes our job easy, you know, makes what yeah. we do. Uh, I haven't let seen... me take a sin off for Kevin Hart though, which I appreciate. Yeah. Cause I, I don't think he was that into Kevin Hart in the movie, but he <laughs> let me take a sin off. So. Lots and you. lots of drinking today. I haven't seen this one. Um, I, I haven't seen any of the Jumanji's. I don't know anything about it except for that. I'm picking up that you get sucked into a game, but then based on all this conversation and the sins video, there's no way I would watch this because if there's no, you didn't see the, you didn't see the Robin Williams one when you were a Mm -hmm. kid or anything. Nope. Yeah. She hasn't seen any of them. So take three drinks because there's three of them. So (laughs) (laughs) take a drink per character. So that'd be like 27. Um, but, but it was really interesting to watch this, uh, sins video and then try to piece together what was really happening i have to say at the very very beginning i see the rock and i'm like cool i love the rock Woo! which i mean hate me for liking the rock i don't know he has so much oh, charisma like the rock i like he's, the rock. he's fascinating to watch his instagram is so cool it was just like him at the gym all the time and then sometimes he holds his little baby and she's like the size of his bicep so he's just a fascinating <laughs> person um so and i think he's like he's got really good charisma and and uh I don't know. He's kind of has this infectious sort of personality that I really like enjoy whenever I see him. But then immediately when he started talking in this one, I I also knew I never want to no, I never want to see this. <laughs> yeah, my only problem with The Rock is that I mean, you're just going to get that character. That's all you're going to get now. He's not sure. he's not going to go work with like Tarantino or Scorsese. I mean, he's not going to go try to do something different. He's going to he has his directors that he likes to work with, that uh Thuber or whatever that guy that directed Sky- Skyscraper and So you know, your problem get... with him is that he's not diverse enough? No, no, I don't no, he's fine. Like he knows He's listening what, by the way. So be careful. He knows what <laughs> He knows, no, but it's just like us. He's a product, right? Like, 
he knows what his his main fan base wants from his from his acting and his types of characters. So that's what More he's going to give you. Just muscles. like we know, like we're going to give you our, we have a cinema sins brand, right? Uh, he's got a brand. Um, so I don't blame him for that at all. And he's making a shit ton of money and he is, he is working constantly. So good yeah. for him. Yeah. But I just know that like when he started off, he did some kind of interesting things. Like he was in that get shorty sequel, uh, be cool where he played like a really interesting character and uh, he tried some things like that early on, but now you're just going to get San Andreas is what you're going to get. Well, and it's it's fine. It's understandable too, in many ways, because as good of an actor as, as he could be, uh, he has made physical choices that make any movie he's in have to account for his physical choices. So every movie he's in, right. Every movie he's in has to account for the way he looks. Uh, yeah, it's in, absolutely no different than Schwarzenegger was in the 80s and early 90s when he was doing his run. And, uh, you know, I loved that as a youngster. And I'm sure there's a lot of young people that love The Rock for the same reason. So, yeah. I count it, myself uh, among them. Oh, uh, I know. Yeah, you because you like Skyscraper and Rampage. I do. So, uh, I do enjoy those movies. <laughs> yes, I, very I, much. I, I, I've, I, you know what? I will say this. I would probably watch those over this again because... Hundred percent. I feel like those movies are shorter, <laughs> and just, and they're not as convoluted. Like you know, they're just they're just kind of lean and mean. Right. Whereas this has you know, so I don't know. Uh, some uh, of my favorite stuff uh, from the video. I liked Mad Max Jumanji Road. I thought was good. Uh, <laughs> we both had different Mad Max sins actually, which was really bizarre. Like at different moments. I love. Uh, we uh, both wrote that. I love that. I finally got the amazing context for roll midriffs. I mean short shorts. <laughs> I mean cleavage. <laughs> cleavage yeah that was that was the line i said last week and then yeah, i was like you yeah. guys are not gonna get that because you have not seen this video <laughs> yeah yeah it was and kind of a double was it was a double perverted. giggle for me it was really funny yeah. and then also i was like oh that's what jonathan was referencing <laughs> uh that was we've pretty much mentioned everything else i nodded pretty much the whole way through the video i was just like yes preach it yes exactly had the yeah. same thought yes uh <laughs> so that was kind of my experience what about you guys um, aside from the stuff that Jonathan's already mentioned, I really liked um the one about uh like starting with the information about the deaths. I think it's such an interesting thing to realize that movies do is they'll allow a tragedy to happen that's completely preventable just to build tension so that you yeah. have stakes in the game. Yeah. And this was a perfect example of that. And no, it's not like a it's not like a super funny thing to point out, but it's just something that I'm starting to recognize more and more. Um but one of my P- top favorites was great awesome can we talk about sending a five-year-old to open up the door at night i was like yep yeah, that's good <laughs> <laughs> that's relatable to my life in a big way so <laughs> i like that one jonathan do you have any others no i didn't have anything else all right what i was talking about so we're good all right we'll move on to night at the museum uh this is an atkinson watkinson script uh this was uh, chris <laughs> and jonathan uh so this is the original night at the museum of an eventual three is that right? Three of these movies have been made. Yes, uh, yeah, I haven't seen uh, this, and I had never seen this. This is uh, this is not something uh, I had ever showed Mackenzie or oh, interesting. watched myself. So interesting. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know why it just never really came up, but uh, this was the first time I saw it, and uh, I really didn't like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, and you talk about like this movie has so much potential, and it's just it's so lazy. Like they just they don't really do anything that fun with the concept. Hmm, hmm, for me hmm. personally like i just i this felt like a very like this just felt very much like a ben stiller movie at hmm. this time period kind of hmm. like kind of like jumanji feels like a rock movie for 2019 today have you seen any of the night at the museum movies man everyone's gonna be so drunk on this episode take three drinks i hope you're drinking like half sweet half unsweet tea like i am <laughs> you know that'll be That'll be helpful. Nope. I've never seen any of the none of the museums, although I understand the basic concept is that everything comes to life. Yeah. And I kind of knew that going into watching this one. But I had so many questions about how this all even works. And um, then oh, I was so reading we. about. That's why we send it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and Chris said a lot of the same things. So yeah. I guess I could read what he says sure. if you yeah. want. Start with Chris. Yeah. He said, it's a curious movie, a family movie starring some of the top comic actors at that time, written by Reno 911 writers Thomas Lennon and Robert mm-hmm. Ben Garant. Garant? 
don't know how to say that pro- properly. Uh, that, yeah, I think it's I think it's Garant, but I don't know. Uh, for a fact. So Stiller was still a huge box office draw this time, and this movie made some bank back in the Christmas holidays in 2006. This is the first non-animated Ben Stiller movie that this uh, channel has done. Madagascar and Megamind were the animated ones we've already done for oh, Ben Stiller. Um, this movie is weird. And not because the exhibits come to life at night. The reason Stiller even gets the job is because security guards Dick Van Dyke, Mick Rooney, and Bill Cobbs are being forced out and they need a fall guy for when they rob the museum. Oh, is that what's going on? Okay. Uh, and apparently they get to do the hiring for some reason the museum of natural history apparently doesn't employ video cameras in 2006 which allows this whole plot to happen yep they leave oh that is insane yeah super crazy uh they leave stiller instructions that are dumb throw the bone is the first one like anyone knows what that even means (laughs) what's my nickname in college Ah, interesting. No, I'm just uh, even if you don't care if he does the job well, this is your fall guy for uh, fall guy who you plan to take advantage of later. He could easily die if you don't give him good directions. He doesn't even get a night with all the veteran security guards during his training. The whole movie is for some setup mainly um, is for sure set up mainly for those exhibits to come to life, and everything else is incidental and throw your brain out and accept everything. There's also a couple of scenes where the movie contradicts itself on what these exhibits are. Theodore Roosevelt, a.k.a. Robin Williams, has all the knowledge and memories of Roosevelt, but later he's like, well, I was made in a mannequin factory and I don't know how to do this thing. Um, Chris goes on to say, I was 29 when this movie came out, so I'm not sure I ever found it amusing, but it obviously did well enough and two other movies came out. Yeah, I, you know, I, that's the thing. I mean, you can definitely throw your brain out the door and just watch this. I mean, I, I don't have an issue with that. But for sending purposes, obviously, we're going to call that stuff out. But I do think this one's a little ridiculous. Like, like they would never, like, they don't have nighttime events at that museum. Like, they don't ever have, like, employees stay for uh, overtime to, to get an exhibit ready for the next day. Like, just none of that stuff. I mean, at least address that. You know, none of that is addressed at all. <laughs> yeah. And I think I, the only reason Aaron likes this movie is because Dick Van Dyke and Mickey Rooney are in it. Have I said I like uh, the movie yet? No, I'm just kidding. No, but you just gave me the look like when I said what I thought it was What do you lazy. think about this movie, Aaron? Oh, You said well, you thought it was better than Jumanji. Funny you ask. Um, <laughs> I do like this movie. I like this movie a That's lot. That's cool. Um, I... E- I guess it comes down to you're right. Uh, try to put Ben Stiller, Dick Van Dyke, Robin Williams, and Steve Coogan in a movie and try to mm-hmm. make me not like it. Like, I just, like, these are some of I'm my favorite. I'm glad you favorite... didn't mention Owen Wilson, by the way. Uh, <laughs> these are some of my favorite people to watch on film. And, Coogan's amazing. Uh, and so to to kind of experience it then is different than experiencing it now, 14 years later, right? Mm And I think if I were in your same position and watching this movie for the first time in 2020, I think I would feel exactly the same way you do. Uh, I just remember in that moment having a lot of fun with it, and I I think I talked about it as one of my favorite movies of that year. I just really had a good time with it. And you you might be right, because when you're first watching something as a Sins writer, that is very different. Like, if Mm -hmm. I had just watched this in 03, or if I just watched this with my daughter one night, you know, after she was born, maybe I would have you know just not because i probably wouldn't have thought about these things but yeah no uh, there's a there's a lot of suspension of disbelief or even i would even call it apathy of disbelief like it's just i don't i don't care that there's no security cameras when i watch this in 2006 i'm just having a good time with the conceit that i've just bought into you know i've just bought into this idea Mm -hmm. that poor ben stiller uh has been you know uh, set out on an island basically and told okay survive t-rex is coming to life and attila the hun coming to life and you know so i just I had a lot of fun with that stuff. But so I also think that all of these people have been better, though. That's I mean, sure. they're funny people. But like, oh, that's yeah. the thing. We had a few people comment on why we didn't give a send off for Robin Williams. Like, yeah, I miss Robin Williams. I mean, I wish Robin Williams was still alive. I don't think he's particularly great in this movie, though. Like, he's OK. But yeah. like, I wouldn't I don't feel the need to give a send off for this you know, movie is it's him you just know, for giving the people, Robin Williams performance. But for the, for the people that it's for, it has to have been so fun to watch. Like, mm-hmm. I think about maybe Iris seeing something like this when she's at that age where, you know, she can kind of perceive how interesting it is for your toys to come to life, like in Toy Story, or for a museum to come to life, or anything to come to life when you're not watching. That's a fun, imaginative world. And I think that I would enjoy this concept uh, 
more than Jumanji, for oh, yeah. example. I think so. Oh, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's better than the last Jumanji movie, for sure. And I, it was also interesting to see, you know, just how CGI was happening in 2006 and how they're doing all... Because the, there's a lot of live-action characters. There's not really a lot of CGI, mm-hmm. it didn't seem, you know? So then you thinking about how they pieced like all the animals running down the staircase together and how they put all that stuff together for somebody to kind of have a good time to just turn your brain off and watch a silly show and not ask a lot of questions. But I did like that both scripts this time seem to ask a lot of questions. When I say both scripts, the Jumanji and this one, I'd be like, okay, what are the rules here? How does this even work? Like when I was watching, I'm like, but why doesn't the lion eat all the animals that are running around? You know, these, these kinds of things that yeah, we don't well, understand. Yeah, well, that's one of the rules too. Like the, that's like the second rule is like lock up the lions, which why wouldn't that be the first rule? Like, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> like, you know, once the like, museum the closes- if Why wouldn't you just go gets lock? To you, but like, then the lion ends up the lion ends up not really being a threat. I mean, even after they make a big deal about it, and then, but, um, but yeah, there was there was just there was I will I mean this was a really fun one to send because there was there was just a smorgasbord of stuff to like a buffet. So, so because I haven't seen on. it, just a, real briefly, is it that do they reset every night? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's the curse, okay. it's, uh, or it's a well. I mean, yeah, I guess it's a curse. It's a there's a Tutankhamun ex- exhibit, and Chris made, wrote that great sin about. So that that first night, a bunch of people died, and because <laughs> like nobody would have known what was going on or how right. to handle it, you know. But uh, they got that exhibit like in the '60s or '50s or something, and uh, every night it it uh, comes on, it comes alive, and uh, all the all the mannequins and whatnot. Yeah, uh, come and to if life. that's the case, it'd be like, okay, you have a bone for the T Rex, you have a steak yeah. for the this, you know, like there would have this, you would have this whole routine down if that had been happening for all these years. There'd be a routine for. Well, there's no way it wouldn't have gotten out either. I mean, well, I mean sure. that first night it would have gotten out. I mean, I, I granted, I get people don't want to believe shit like that, but I'm just saying. I mean, more people would have known about this than Dick Van Dyke and Mickey Rooney. And and, and so the idea the is that even though like the people are made of wax, the wax comes to life and all that And they stuff. know like they have memories. Okay. That's my favorite part, though. Like the funny. I'm so glad Chris wrote something about this because I didn't even think about the time. But it's so funny. Like Carla Gugino's character is writing a thesis on uh, Sacagawea. And so like at the end of the movie, when she finds out all these people are coming to life, he's like, hey, you want to go talk to Sacagawea about your thesis? She's going to talk <laughs> like a mannequin. So, like a mannequin's going to help her like... <laughs> <laughs> with her uh with her dissertation or i don't know it was really fun yeah no it's good stuff um who wants to start danae you want to start with uh, yeah. any of your thoughts on the the sins in the video itself i tend to love any sin that's about dog-like activities yeah, so like too. the whole the whole t-rex that wouldn't keep we wouldn't stop playing until it was dead sort of a thing that's yeah. so so true it reminds me of the one that was written in the Downton Abbey. Like, do you want to teach a dog to beg? Because that's how you teach a dog to beg. <laughs> yeah. I just, I love anytime you can point out that sort of stuff. So I, I love, really I also love the one. wording of the punchline on that. Uh, so two seems kind of on the low end. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, also, just the the attention to the detail of the books and how they were so chaotic. Being raised by a book family and having all, I always like to look at the books in the backgrounds. So I feel like yeah, that's definitely too. one that I would. I kind of lean towards like, what is this? And then knowing that none of them really are in like yeah, order. Yeah, book, bookstores and movies are a nightmare. I don't, I don't know. And God, we did that episode of you, and it like they couldn't even make the bookstore look like a bookstore. It looked like a fucking library. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how hard that is. Why wouldn't you just go film in a bookstore? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, bookstores well, well, and movies I, are insane. If it's a used bookstore, then libraries have sales. That's true. So you go and you buy up lots of books from libraries and then peeling off the stickers and stuff will sometimes ruin the integrity of the book. So That's you true. don't do that. But. That is fair. Um, and then the um, mannequin, it was a lot of what actually was already kind of pointed out, like the running away, like what's the range here? Because mm-hmm. once they get away from the museum, when they turn back into mannequins, like what's the rules? And I just... Personally, I really enjoy getting into the nitty gritty of the rules. So, yeah, it was fun. I had a good time watching it. You know, there's something to be said for uh, both of these movies uh, have the idea of set some rules, follow your rules. And neither one of them do a great job at it. And I think there is something, for me at least, that is really adrenalizing when a movie's like here very clear about here are the rules of our universe 
and then follows those rules, you know, really well. <laughs> like I, I there's yeah. just something I know that seems silly, but there's just there's something about the integrity of that that is activating for me. You know, like if I'm watching a mm-hmm. sci fi movie and it's like, well, in this world, here's how time travel works. Yeah. And, and, and then they stick to that for the movie Then I'm like, you know, I just I, I get into it more. Um, no, I've, I've always said if you can if you can buy what a character is doing within that universe I'm on board because right. I mean that's the only way to watch like like action movies and and stuff like that because I mean obviously like John McClane even though people try to make it seem like that's one of the cool things about Die Hard is it's so realistic Die Hard is not realistic like but Die Hard is well written it's well constructed mm-hmm. you know and th- that's that's what it comes down to so no I totally get what you're saying yeah yeah um I I liked the uh, ah Freddie Mercury uh, I thought that mm-hmm. was really funny <laughs> yeah that was a surprise <laughs> uh, I think the the hit line of the the video has to be longer than the year that was march 2020 thank you <laughs> I, think yeah, that's, I, was, uh, I didn't know if we were going to get to keep that if that would be too dated but yeah no the I, we never send credits but these credits were so long like yeah. i mean they were just going on forever and it wasn't even like over action like it was just credits <laughs> yeah so i so. i enjoyed those very much Danae mentioned the other ones i had including the dog one um what about you jonathan Anything else you wanted to mention? Um, no, I think. Uh, <laughs> oh, the only thing I did, I did enjoy. Chris wrote a great line. I love the and I love the way Jeremy read it. It was like Chris wrote that bit about the Ben Stiller character. Like, you know, I get that he's kind of going through. He's he's trying to impress his kid. He's trying to do best for his kid or whatever. He's like, but is this the person we're gonna we want to root for? <laughs> because that's another <laughs> that's another thing about the movie is just the Ben Stiller character. Which, yeah. like a lot of Ben Stiller characters. That happens uh, so much though in movies. And I you know again don't really realize until. I'm starting to critically think about it. The character is introduced, and just because they're the main character, just because we're yeah. introduced to them, we immediately have this strange obligatory, like obligatory rather, mm-hmm. feel that comes over us to like, okay, this person is the person we're supposed to care for from the beginning to the end. Yeah, and I mean, he seems like a nice enough guy, but like he's not, like he's not very responsible, and like he's, you know, he won't really take a job seriously. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of negatives, um, and, and he doesn't really seem to put his kid first. But then, of course, throughout the movie, they're supposed to like grow and change, and I don't know that he really. Really does <laughs> i think he just kind of lucks into an interesting situation and makes the most of it but mm-hmm. at the risk know. of it's at, weird at the risk of being um oh i'm not even i don't even know what the word would be but uh, it is kind of very a millennial mindset you know it's kind of in that that era of you know just kind of thinking that way of mm-hmm. you know adulting is hard you know adult i i just remember during that time that was the whole thing with uh you know with that generation was oh now i have to start adulting 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 yeah, and, and it kind of has that element to it thing too I right mean, yeah yeah that's that ben stiller plays that character a lot i haven't seen the secret life of walter mitty but i assume he's similar in that and then but even stuff like uh like mystery men um you know meet the parents right. um you know movies like that i mean he's he's playing that similar character i just think that's very much the feel of this plot is man adulting mm-hmm. is hard do we really have to adult in the movie kind of says no <laughs> no you don't have to just you no, know you be just, responsible you can hang yeah. out with teddy roosevelt yeah. every night yeah. and uh, yeah. uh try to try to hook him up with Sacagawea. <laughs> that was that was that that's a weird like whole plot line too where like uh, robin like teddy roosevelt is trying to have sex with Sacagawea. i don't know that was a that was an interesting kids movie choice i'll whatever. sack your Julia. Yeah, um, pretty much. <laughs> and then you said the Steve Coogan thing. Like, that's what this movie just felt like. It felt like everybody was like, hey, what would be funny? How about having Romans and Cowboys fight? Like, that'd be funny, right? Let's do that. And I don't know. <laughs> just, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it in 2006. Yeah, no, no. I can, I can totally see that. If I had watched this without sin, uh, sin goggles the first time, I probably would have liked it a little better. And I definitely didn't hate it. I yeah. mean... I'm writing down sin goggles for our <laughs> merch store. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. Some, some, maybe like some, I don't know, steampunk ty- style, yeah. like evil looking Mad Max sort of like goggles that like when you pull them down over your eyes, everything goes dark. You, all you <laughs> see is the word ding. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, all right, let's move on to keeping tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're just going to tell a story from putting together the week's content this week. Maybe a Google search, some strange research, a deleted sin, just something that popped out to us. Uh, I'm going to go first because uh, I didn't have anything. <laughs> like, oh, on- let me go second. Let me go the second. The only thing, the only thing I wrote on was the Better Call Saul episode, uh, and the only 
kind of research that I really kind of did was on past due notices because there's that typical cliche moment where he's licking through envelopes and they all say they all have stamped past due on the envelope. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know that I've ever seen an envelope that has past due stamped on the envelope. Is that something no, companies do? on the letter. You know, <clears throat> right. Like yeah. I'm thinking, you letter. know, and hey, that's personal. Don't tell the whole world. <laughs> um, no, that's that's a no, that's a definitely a cliche. I was glad you pointed that out. Well, because, and yeah. and I and so I did I did a little bit of research and actually, yeah, companies do that do do that occasionally. They do put it on I the should. envelope itself. And I was just thinking maybe that was a shortcut that movies and TV took, uh, you know, so they didn't have to open the letters to see that people were behind on their bills. I just got real funny. I just I had a we had a uh, we had some money due at our dentist that we didn't even think. Well, I guess we just forgot about and uh, i got like a really nicely worded letter from them the other day like i understand there's a lot going on right now i'm sure that's why you have forgotten to <laughs> pay us the money you owe us i just tell there's but only if you could call us next week which i'm no, gonna call them tomorrow, no but... they're they're always not there's one yeah. bill there's one medical bill uh <laughs> that that i that always ends up being overdue and it's not because we don't have the money to pay it or we wouldn't pay it it's just that mm -hmm. it's the only one i have to call them to pay everything else i can go oh, online and just and that's pay. true here that's true in this case too i have to call the dentist and so it's I forget like about and it. every time i'm like can you please do online bill pay Please just yeah. set it up, and I'll never have a late payment again. I promise. Yeah. Like I'll even set up an automatic payment if yes, that's what you would yes, like me to do. Yes. Anyhow, that's how so funny. Lazy we were just talking we? about that in in our home too. We had the same kind of conversation yeah. happen where it's like the bills that didn't get paid are the ones we had to call. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. We're just so we're just so it's lazy. Oh, that's just all there is to like, it. If you have to if you have to call your bank right now, at least if it's Wells Fargo, just you're going to be on hold for two hours oh, because that's the it's truth just too, so yeah. many people are calling. I, I will when say I, though, we had a, we had a letter come in from our um, car insurance, and they gave us back a hundred dollars this month. Yeah, our car insurance did too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Maybe we're maybe we'll get to see that. No, but I think I mentioned that on Slack the other day too. But like, yeah, like uh, the the bank, I had the they put us on uh, the COVID nineteen forbearance thing, and we didn't ask to be on it. They just put us on. And then so when I went to pay my bill online, it wouldn't let me because it's like, well, no, you have to call it in if you're on the forbearance plan. I was like, I don't want to be on the forbearance plan. I can pay. I want to pay my bill. <laughs> and then I had to call, and then I had to be online, and then I'd be on hold for like two hours, and then they wrote down my my account number wrong. Which is yeah. stupid because I do all my business through the same bank. So they have my account information. And then so I had to call again two days later when they said they couldn't get the funds out. And uh, then I was on hold again for two hours. And I was just like, this is, this is some bullshit. You take me off this now. And they did. So. And then I then I tried to pay him with a check that didn't have a routing number or an account number yeah. on it. Yeah, then just... I tried to pay him with a Breaking Bad check. <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, what about you, Danae? Um, oh, you're funny. You're like, I don't have anything. And I was like, me either. Oh, but... <laughs> nice. But then I actually remembered I did look up Sea Bear just to see like what else is out there. And there mm -hmm. is a Sea Bear restaurant. There is a Sea Bear band. And then there's the Sea Bear episode. Mm. So you can actually get Sea Bear smoked salmon on Amazon if you want to. Um, sea Bear uh, oyster bar is in Georgia. Very, very good reviews. Um, at the current time of our recording, there is no waiting at the restaurant, uh, probably because of COVID-19. But they have 425 Google reviews with a 4.7 oh, nice. out of five stars. That's really, really good. Yeah, I mean, that's a pr that's that's a pretty good. So it makes me curious to go there. There's seabear.com where you can get that smoked salmon stuff instead of on Amazon. You can buy it directly. I don't know. I'm just learning a lot and I'm hungry. Uh, strangely enough, Sea Bear is also the brand name of my new invention. Uh, my new X-ray goggles uh, invention are called Sea Bear. So just you know. Oh, smart! I like it. What about you, Jonathan? You wrote on everything this week. You should make up for know, us not having yeah, anything. Let me, let me tell you about thirty things I did. No, um, I did some research on the New York City Museum of Natural History because, and I really didn't use any of it. But I just I pulled a Danae and did like a hour and a half of like research I didn't use. I did this recently too on another uh, another thing we were doing, but that was on cancer, and that was very depressing. I wish I had not done that research, but uh, but no. But I did this on the New York City Museum of Natural History and. Uh, uh, just learned some fun facts. Um, it used to be located in Central Park, which I did not know. 
the Teddy Roosevelt connection is actually, although I don't know why they didn't talk about this in the movie, but Teddy Roosevelt actually hunted animals for the museum. Like, I guess he hunted animals that they could then have a display Oh, like they would stuff them and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, there was an actual, like, because it's interesting because, you know, Dick Clark, Dick Clark, Dick Van Dyke <laughs> and uh, crew uh, do their, uh, they're trying to like, uh, um, they're trying to steal the, the, the Tutankhamun thing or the Egyptian thing thing so they can have it for themselves and uh, they decide to go ahead and rob the uh, museum so i actually looked up to see if there was any other time where it was robbed and in 1964 there was over four hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels were stolen oh wow. by a surfer from miami named jack murphy wow uh he got arrested pretty quickly is that, is that uh, the uh, inspiration for point break i don't know that's, that's <laughs> i didn't i didn't look that far into it uh there's a pronghorn a pronghorn i guess is kind of like i looked it up it kind of looks like a deer or something uh there's a diorama a pronghorn horn diorama that has actual poop in it this sounded like something today would find interesting <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I'm, here. They, I'm here for it tell me they more. Added, tell me more they added uh pronghorn uh poo pellets to give it a little more authenticity yeah um, mm-hmm. we need some good poop it has a even though night at the museum technically did not shoot the mo- majority of the movie in the museum which chris and which chris pointed out that it's it's a lot bigger than what you see in the movie uh they did make they did film some of it there uh they, the the exterior shots were definitely there but it has appeared in a lot of movies uh devil wears prada uh wonderstruck exorcist 2 the heretic and malcolm x and then uh children can spend the night in the museum for birthday parties which is kind of fun. Ooh, they do that, that here fun. with we have a Discovery it, Center and Mackenzie's gone to a couple of sleepovers over there. Or at least hey, research line. guy, ho- ho- hold on for a second. No, you're when fine. You, That's all when I have. you said ch- children, is there like a cutoff age where you can stay the night in the museum? Just you know, I think it's cur- just people have like slumber parties and birthday parties. I would think it's oh, just kids. I have a kid now. I can make yes. it her party <laughs> and then. Oh, you want to spend the night there? Hell yeah, yeah. that'd be yeah. so yeah. cool. Well, I think. Yeah. I'll, it's a it's a response to this movie, right? Didn't they start doing yeah. that after these movies? Oh, I, they didn't say that. I was oh, looking. I wasn't looking at anything compared to the movie, but that would make sense. That but would we, make like sense. Like I said, we have a. I don't know. You guys probably have like a science center, right, or something around you. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if yours does six. this, but the ones here, you can they do that because, like I said, Mackenzie's gone to parties there and spent the night before. I will like, never forget the first time that I went to that museum in person, and I walked around the corner into the uh, area where there's like all of the dinosaur bones. Mm-hmm. And I came face to face with a triceratops and mm-hmm. a like the skull, just the skull and also the skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think I was in my early 20s when I went on this trip. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I mean, it's weird. Dinosaurs are weird. You know that they're real, but it, it's like land before time dinosaurs. Yeah. It's TV show dinosaurs. It's fun, like kid dinosaur stuff. And then, yeah, yeah, dinosaur bones, whatever, blah, 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 blah. But when you see one for real, for me at least, I was like, oh, my God, that is so terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that I mean, the biggest, yeah, scariest that would... monster ever. And then so that was like that was happening while also was happening like they're real like they're just not some sort of myth this was a real thing you know what i mean Although, it was just i had a science thing. teacher in eighth grade that tried to tell us that they weren't real because they weren't oh. mentioned in the bible oh <laughs> well that is a true story an adult person <laughs> told a bunch of 12 year olds or 13 year olds that uh. Uh, she did not believe in dinosaurs well, and she was our science teacher not everybody no, does nah, that worked out. i learned a lot that year <laughs> Go to uh, go to Church of Christ school, everybody. Freaking eighties. <laughs> <laughs> I would highly recommend going though, because I think that's the also the yeah. one that has the Hope Diamond, which, we, which we've talked about before. Well, I, I think you're Hope talking Diamond about the at, one in uh, in DC. I think you're yeah. talking about Washington DC. This is in New yeah, York. Yeah, that's right. You're right. I yeah. don't think you can spend the night in yeah. the Smithsonian. I don't think you can do yeah. that. But um, but yes, I, the Hope Diamond. I've seen that. That was really young. That was a long time ago. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah. I actually cool. just found an old. Um, like a little card memory card from my camera from that trip and went back through all my photos and I had taken so many pictures while I was in those particular sections. So I have like 17 pictures of the hope diamond, which doesn't look that impressive when you just take a picture of a diamond. (laughs) And then I have a whole bunch of dinosaur bone ones. Also not, as impressive at all and then i have about and i'm not i probably have 70 photos of minerals (laughs) like 
<laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Like, why does that not surprise me? Like, I'm not like, oh, wow, Danae, that's crazy. Like, no, that's not like, like Danae. Like, crystal and agate <laughs> and turquoise and, you know, tiger's eye and all of these stones that I find awesome. fascinating and beautiful. They're all, and they have these just magnificent cases filled with these samples. And I just have photo after photo. After. It's like I took I'll a picture show. of everything. One. I need to show my daughter some of that though, because she's like really like she just likes to bring rocks in the house. Like even yeah. now, even like at eight years old, like she's real big on that. So That's I awesome. think that would fascinate her. Uh, I love right now she's just like grabbing gravel. Like, hey, I think I know why. I think I know where it started for me back in my childhood. But I am telling you, man, that I now all these years later going back, I'm like, okay, Danae, cool. You took a whole bunch of pictures of rocks. <laughs> You can barely see. I do remember being fascinated by them, and I felt I remember the emotion of being in that room, mm -hmm. the whole thing. I remember all that, but I have all these stupid pictures to go along with it now. Great. And now, uh, Danae will be starting her own channel called uh, Mineral Sins, uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll be talking about geodes and amethyst and all sorts ah, of wonderful stuff. There, so. And also, uh, there's got to be a phobia of dinosaurs, right? Oh, it sure. Has to be. There's a phobia of everything. Yeah, yeah. It's probably called dinophobia. I would imagine it is. I would imagine that's the easiest way to go with that. Yep, dinophobia. <laughs> Not to be confused with dinophobia, which is the fear of the Flintstones. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. yes, just to clear that up. Or that guy who plays the piano. Man, yes. the Flintstones is on some random channel here. Like, it's on, like, I think it's uh, it's one of those, like, that shows old TV shows. All of a sudden, I can't think of any of the names of those channels. Hey, Aaron, do you feel like this episode in particular is like herding cats? <laughs> <laughs> Not in particular. Actually, no. though, we're doing really good on time. <laughs> nope. Seems like a normal a normal oh, okay. Sunday afternoon to me. Oh, okay, well, okay, what okay, I was going to okay. say, though, is we're doing excellent on time. We're under two hours right now, and we're Woo! almost done. Yeah. Well. Are we, though? Almost. Are we? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's move on to the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're each going to pull a comment from the week's videos uh, that we enjoyed. Uh, and Danae already kind of took mine, uh, but this came from the uh, spitting sin that you had mentioned. Uh, this, the comment basically says, video, it's not easy to spit while saying bum. You tried it. Uh, and these are some of my favorite sins when people can demonstrably check and see if what we're saying is true. You know, like it's kind of like the uh, it's it, it's the lick your elbow effect, right? You yeah, know, it's yeah. like, oh, God, that's amazing. I never even thought about that. But yeah, it's like you just picture that person's like, well, hold on a damn second. Can pauses I? the video. Yes, absolutely. Then it like performs like. OK, OK. Tests. Can you because this is what I was hoping for and I didn't see this comment. I'm so happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Did yeah. they all like pause? Pause and try to spit for yes. real. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that's and and again. Try. Yeah. I. I listen. I. You know. I. I love to name sins. Oh. I'm going to call them elbow licking sins. You know, just those kind of sins where people will pause the video and be like, "Is that true? Can I do that?" Uh, I love that stuff. Uh, it's great. Today, what do you got? Uh, um, I wanted to kind of dive more into uh, this. Is a comment comes from Bradley Selman, who said Squidward is a horrible character, and I wanted to die a horrible death. I Thirty saw seconds that. later, he compares himself to Squidward. There's an interesting. <laughs> Uh, conversation thread. There's actually a lot of um, new fan shaming, which, guys, let's just be nice to each other if we can. If, and then skip down, skip down to Margaret, who says, to be fair, when we were kids, we were always seeing ourselves as SpongeBob, but when we grow up, we see ourselves as Squidward. I like that comment. And then uh, Nugara says, his face is what was being sinned, not Squidward himself. And so this conversation was really interesting to me because I wrote this particular joke. Yeah, when no, Squidward I, himself was being was being sinned, right? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about yours. Okay, I, I apologize. You're talking the about one, your The sin. one yeah. where it's just like me and yeah, yeah, the, yeah, whole, yeah, yeah. the whole kind of weirdness that was going on. And then the camera kind of pans over to Squidward's face, who's just looking yeah, like I was kind of annoyed. sinning Squidward's entire body. But go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> but what was interesting to me is that when you put a, a, um, a, a video out there, the context of what you wrote can change and this is kind of one of those examples where yeah, we ended that with i hate his face right the Something vibe like of the vibe of hating on squidward mm -hmm. here um 
so intensely and wanting him to die and then comparing i like how people are kind of going deeper into this and being like well actually this is a philosophical discussion on how jeremy feels about himself and the channel and he's making a joke about how you know when he does this sort of thing it actually ends up inciting conversation and you know here in the comment section because the comment section is what actually increases views there's an algorithm you see it's a youtube algorithm and, and this is actually what this is all about like but no I no think, i was I just sitting squidward's face that's all yeah. i was doing it it was just his face <laughs> and anyhow i liked the conversation for that reason i, I do think it's interesting when the well, when they evolve for the fan base um and i tend to find i don't know i just i don't mind that this one kind of shifted into that it probably could even be true and had i thought about it on a deeper level and really compared my sins to jonathan's sins maybe it would have turned into that but uh that's the way that it landed so anyways there's I had something a fun time in that one I there, think we do word things though sometimes a certain way to incite uh, things like I mean like you know like purposely troll ourselves or yeah but I don't usually yeah. purposefully troll with the point of getting more views or more interaction oh, no, no, in the no. comments. Yeah. Well, there's no way for there's, an algorithm. Uh, yeah, no, the algorithm thing is there's no yeah, way. I mean, that the only, one the I don't thing... ever think about. I did at one point in time. Uh, I can't remember what script it was for. I don't know that it actually matters. But the sin was something along the lines of asking the fans in this narrative sins moment what his like D and D character should be or something like that. It was and it was so it was it was and uh, asking for comments and. Uh, because I think about wanting to engage with the fans and have some kind of thread going on. I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't. It ended. It didn't end up making it. So I, I have thought about conversation and comments as a goal. I guess once so far in my time with the company. But yeah, I don't think about it from like a you know technically if there's more conversation having than you know YouTube puts the video higher than other videos. I yeah. don't think like that. I forget anyway. how personally people take their fandom too because I just. I don't feel like I take stuff that personally. Like, I mean, the things I love, like Star Trek and Spider-Man, like if you don't like them, I, I don't know, it, whatever. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't offend me. But uh, but obviously there are people that love Squidward and <laughs> they, and they okay. took what we said very seriously. But the good thing is they blame Jeremy and not us. That's the important <laughs> part. That's right. Yeah, you know, today one of my favorite things about what you bring up is the idea of how the creation is defined by the people who view it. You know, it's kind of like in communication, like meaning is determined by the receiver, not the sender, which a lot mm -hmm. of people don't realize when you are trying to say something to somebody, you actually don't determine the meaning. The meaning is actually determined by the person who hears it. And mm -hmm. so when we, it, you know, what we're trying to do at the end of the day may not be the same thing the fans take out of it, right? Yeah. So they offer it this new context, context, they bring it to a different place. They, you know, they have their own interpretations that may change what we were intending and as somebody who creates you just kind of have to live with that yeah yeah and in this case i don't really Absolutely. mind it because it kind of seems like it could really be on brand for what we want to put out that jeremy is doing but it's just i don't know i found that one in particular that one fascinating and i can see how it would be put together because inside of one video we talk about hating him and wanting him to die now i will say also in that same comment section if you're the kind of person that likes to send encouragement to people there are people who are like yeah i can relate to you jeremy i also you know i'm feeling down and out so you know that's that stuff will pop up in the comments and i like that there's also a community that kind of goes in and is like hey man are you okay i hope you're having a good day or stuff like that yeah, so yeah the positivity um, is because when thing. we make jokes like that oftentimes that's brought you know kind of brought up and that's one of the big things for our channel is to make sure we remind people that there is uh someone that you can talk to if you are feeling you know and we'd make jokey comments sometimes and and uh, but there's real stuff underneath so i guess if you're going to go read that particular comment thread because i just sent you there and you see that if that's a trigger for you or whatever just know that that conversations being had inside of that comment thread as well if you want to see a movie <laughs> that deals with that subject in a beautiful metaphorical way and sometimes a not so beautiful metaphorical way uh aronofsky's mother uh is a pretty incredible look at what it means to be a creator what it means Man, to you put get art a lot into the you got a lot out of that movie dude it's all right i need, there. To I, need I gotta watch that movie again. that movie is a movie you could watch three different times with three different perspectives and it just makes complete I sense you. um and i've so, only really seen yeah. it the one time I, that's definitely one i need to watch again because i'm really curious uh like i but i had that thing with noah and the fountain like i was like i need to watch those again but then i watched them again and liked them less so <laughs> it's a little but i yeah. think mother will be a different experience yeah 
So it was did we all go time. over our comments yet? Or Aaron, did you do yours? I did mine. Yes, I have not done one. No. I don't have like we talked about a couple of the things, but I will say, um, hold on a second, we'll check which one. Oh, um, I guess I'll do this one. Although, well, no, we talked about the gameplay because I had one on the gameplay and Jumanji. But I will say, uh, Traflis said, uh, regardless of all the sins, I love Jack Black in these movies. He's always doing his best and a damn good job with it. I don't disagree with that. I do just, I don't know. It was, it was. It was kind of hard not to make a sin, though, about him, A, first being an African-American male <laughs> and then having to be a young girl. Um, that was just pretty obvious sense with territory. But yes, Jack Black does a very good job. Like he's he's very funny and uh, his impressions are dead on, I guess, I, of that type of person. I had forgotten he was such a big part of Cable Guy. Uh, for some reason, I had totally uh, forgotten that he was a big part of that. I movie. don't even I don't even remember he's in it. Yeah, because I wouldn't have really known who. No, I mean, I watched Mr. Show, but I think Mr. Show was after that even. But, or maybe it was right around that time. Yeah. Because that was the first time I remember seeing him when he did Tenacious D on Mr. Show. Or actually, there was a sketch called Jeepers Creeper Superstar. And that was the first time I ever remember seeing him do anything. All right, let's move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity. And beyond! Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're going to take a look at something else from the pop culture world uh, that we may have seen recently. Um, who wants to go first? Anybody want to volunteer? I mean, I can go. That's fine. I felt like um, I, I just felt like I was a youth pastor again and asking who wanted to pray. <laughs> like, that was the exact same vibe. Like, you know, who wants to pray for us tonight? Total silence. Everybody silent. Can I, t- <laughs> can I tell you that I always liked praying because I can make it quick? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There are definitely different yeah, strategies. Yeah, sure, I'll pray. That's amazing, but I would have felt obligated to make it longer. But I, God, I, thank I, I'm you. Not Danae, so. Thank you, Lord. Okay, bye. <laughs> Let's eat. Exactly. Uh, mine is, uh, I've watched a lot of older films and stuff this past week, but one thing that's newer, uh, Apple TV Plus or the Apple streaming app, they dropped a new series called Defending Jacob. Uh, they dropped the first three episodes on, I believe it was, I guess it was uh, Friday. Uh, and I watched those this weekend. And it is, uh, it's based on a, it's called Defending Jacob. It is based on a 2012 bestselling novel by William Landy, who has only written three books. And he actually hasn't written a book since 2012. But this was a, this was a pretty big hit when it came out. I read it and really liked it. Uh, so I was really curious about this. Um, uh, Chris Evans plays the assistant district, it plays an assistant district attorney whose son, Jacob, uh, plays played by uh, Jaden Martell from uh, It Chapter One, and he was also in Knives Out. He was mm-hmm. Jacob Thromboli in Knives Out. Um, he plays another Jacob in this. Uh, he, uh, a friend of a friend of his at school, or a, a classmate of his is, is killed, and um, he gets uh, charged with the murder. So then this becomes about Chris Evans trying to... Uh, figure out if his son did it and even if he did does he you know is how far is he going to go to try to save him you know how far is he going to go to defend him um and uh it's uh it's it's really good so far it's uh it's definitely modernized some of the stuff that you know wasn't available in 2012 podcasting things like that it's added some interesting elements to it but uh but it's it's pretty fun so far it's pretty standard stuff i don't think it's going to like knock your socks off or anything but if you're in the mood for like a cool like mystery thriller uh courtroom series uh, this is this is this is really well done. It's got a really good cast. Uh, Michelle Dockery, who is I'm becoming a huge Michelle Dockery fan after uh, after The Gentleman and now this. I didn't see Downton Abbey, so I, I'm I was going to say when are you going to dig into Downton? When are you going to dig <laughs> in, man? She might. If anybody's going to get me there, it might be Michelle Dockery. Yeah, she will. Uh, Betty Gabriel from Get Out, she's in it. Uh, oh, nice. Pablo Schreiber from Den of Thieves and uh, Aaron's favorite movie, Skyscraper. Uh, he <laughs> I also like Den, like Den of Thieves. Did you like Den of Thieves? Yeah, Den of, Den of, no, Den of Thieves, is, uh, Den of Thieves is, is killer. I think that's actually, I think Den of Thieves is actually getting like, it's considered more legit now. <laughs> I think when it came out, it was like a January movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so people didn't pay it much mind, but I think people now are like, that's a pretty damn good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, but this, so this is just, this is a fun show. I mean, I don't know it, if you don't have Apple streaming, you're not going to be able to watch it. Uh, like we've mentioned in the past Apple streaming shows that we've recommended, but it's a recommend for me. Uh, it's, uh, I, I really dig these kind of 
shows and uh this is this is definitely i love chris evans and uh i'm really that's another thing i'm really glad chris evans is still hanging out with us because he mentioned a few times like when he was doing the marvel stuff that he might be done after that uh i feel like the marvel movies might have taken a little bit out of him and uh but thankfully he's i guess chosen to stick around and uh keep doing some projects so he's great and I, yeah he's excellent and he's he's perfect in this role um uh, and uh, it's a little different type of role for him as well uh so yeah that's a recommend for me it's called defending jacob uh i will keep us on the uh thread of chris's um i watched cool. chris uh hemsworth's uh new movie uh, extraction on netflix oh nice i have not watched it yet but chris and i are going to do a mini pod uh on chris, that chris, one, so. chris 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 so many chris's so many chris's chris uh, hemsworth and i are going to do a mini pod uh, <laughs> there's it's funny because there's a, a a line in the movie that i thought was really funny where um the kid is from a different country and he says, you don't, you don't look like a Tyler. Cause his name's Tyler. He's mm-hmm. like, well, what do I look like? He's like, <laughs> you look like a Brad. And I was like, <laughs> okay, fair enough. It's like, you could have said Chris, but it was probably too on the nose uh, at that point. But uh, anyways, yeah, the movie is extraction. And uh, I don't know if it's because I haven't been able to go to a theater and watch new movies yeah. in a while. Um, I think this movie's really good. Uh, cool. I really enjoyed it. It, it is definitely a a movie for like that action mindset. Uh, it's not breaking any new ground with you know crazy you know plot twists or but any of that kind of you stuff. You liked the Michael Bay movie though. It's better than that, right? Oh, it's the... legitimately better than that. The, what the was Michael that called? Six Underground is yeah. not a good movie. Six Underground yeah, okay. is an okay. awful movie where they took the governors off of Michael Bay, and it was so crazy that I just gave myself to it. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. Um, I, so that's why I was curious where you were where you stood with this because you're not you're not the biggest action. So. No, no, especially when it's just think. action for action's yeah. sake. Like I come down on the side of. Uh, with movies like The Raid and The Raid 2 of going, I totally see what everybody loves, what yeah. all my friends love, but I want something more out of them. I, you know, I want it to mean something more than just the incredible action. And you want sex. Uh, yes, yes. If you're going to have that In much action. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I I am not just an action guy, but I do like action movies that have that are a little more well rounded. Uh, having said that, this movie isn't like again breaking any new ground mm-hmm. with that stuff, but it's at least giving it an effort. There's some interesting symbolism that happens uh, in this movie with water that I that I thought was interesting to my mind. Uh, there's some real relationship stuff that's going on here, and I don't I don't mean romantic relationship uh, either. Um, between uh him and this kid and there's some important stuff about you know what humanity is what it means to treat somebody like a human instead of a project and i think that stuff is really well done here that's cool but But, i mean all that stuff is to the side in the centerpiece Mm -hmm. of this is the action um i'll have to look it up to remember his name uh it's his first time directing a movie and he's been a stuntman before that and uh talked a little bit about this on sif pop but i really think this modern action era of stuntmen becoming directors is resulting in some really incredible stuff it's it's a lot more interesting than music video directors becoming action directors <laughs> yes. speaking of speaking yes. of michael bay i mean sometimes that works out david fincher but you know but i don't know that got really old quickly uh in the late 90s so. yeah i just i really like what he's doing here there is a sam hargrave yeah sam hargrave is his name he's also in the movie by the way he plays uh, yeah he role worked in the film. on uh, avengers endgame though, so. also i think atomic blonde he worked on too so um so yeah some some good stuff going and he's he's a frequent collaborator with the russo brothers uh who uh helped write this as well um uh, David Harbour shows up. He's great in it. Uh, so there's some good stuff there. Oh, I love David Harbour. But the price of admission on this one is totally, totally worth it just for the 12 to 15 minute one shot action set piece that happens uh, mm-hmm. towards the middle of this movie. It is mind blowing. It is so well done, so kinetic, so interesting. It basically takes every action movie cliche ever puts it in one 12-minute 
uh, long take that never quote unquote cuts away. Obviously, oh, it's it's cool. it's it's obviously simulated. But y- you know, you think about uh, running through the streets. You think about running through buildings. You think about jumping from building to building. You think about knife fights. You think about gun fights. You think about car chases. Like all these different action- excitement. <laughs> yes, thank <laughs> you, Danae. <laughs> so all these all these different cliches that would normally just be oh another action movie with a car chase, another action movie with a you know a gunfight, but it. it it pieces them together in such a creative, fun way and never cuts away. And it's just, it's beautiful. It, it's really so you're worth saying, the price watch of this, admission. watch this on your phone. Is what you're suggesting? <laughs> I'm saying I'm it's very glad I watched it on my giant TV with my yeah. giant sound system. That's what I'm saying. It was, but it it's was not, really and that's good. That's the thing about you explain this. Well, that's what I was trying to explain with defending Jacob is like defending Jacob is also not breaking new ground, but like, I, I, I just, that's okay. Like, I mean, like, that's the thing that I think kills me about social media is everything's got to be like great or, uh, it's, or it sucks, you know, right. it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with like just a good movie, even if it, you know, it doesn't have to be something brand new or something, you know, I think, I, I think, think this a good movie is a good movie, man. I think this movie, uh, accomplishes very, very well what it sets out to do, which is to be, uh, intense and, you know, hold you on the edge of your seat and give you some, uh, visually experiences that you've, mm-hmm maybe never had before uh it is it accomplishes that very very well i'm looking forward to watching it i was just gonna wait because we're not recording till like middle of the week so i i wanted it to be at least fairly fresh so i'm gonna watch it in the next couple days we're doing that and we're doing the hbo movie uh bad education which so. apparently is supposed to be really good with hugh jackman so i will say it is a cautious recommend in the cautious part is just for the violence there's some i mean it's very violent uh and it doesn't um literally pull any punches or gunshot wounds or knife wounds uh they're all in there so yeah be aware of that uh well i guess i can jump off of two so you guys are both like chris chris and i was like okay i'll have to find a way to like link mine with chris um, but then you said cautious vi- uh, recommendation due to violence, and that's a clear, it's a clear, nice segue into mine um, because I'm going to talk about Killing Eve today. Nice. Ooh, killing Chris. Uh, well, I did go, I did go on to, I've, I did find a Chris connection. I went to IMDb. I did a Control F search for the word Chris <laughs> down there, down there at the very bottom. Uh, There's an article from The Hollywood Reporter written by Chris Gardner for the Glad Media Awards where um, Killing Eve was a contender for one of the... (laughs) Nice stretch, Elastigirl. I just want (laughs) Outstanding drama series. Um, (laughs) What did you think? I'm so excited to know what you think. How much did you watch? Well, I have to ask you guys, are you watching this right now? I watched watched the first season. I watched the entire first season. I have not watched anything since. I've watched every episode. Okay. So I'm caught up. Um, I mean, okay, so first of all, I did not expect to get into this show for obvious reasons. This is a very, very violent show. Um, it seems, it, it's kind of like um, every episode, somebody is murdered, and they're murdered in very creative and disgusting, horrible ways. Yes. And so for me, I'm looking away a lot. That's sort of how I'm watching <laughs> this show. I'm I'm feeling the tension of a moment, and I'm closing my eyes and, and looking away to try to avoid as much um, getting into my psyche as possible. However... It is very interesting in how uh, this this killer person um, chooses to murder people. Sometimes it's very spontaneous and unexpected. And so I have seen some very grotesque things in the past <laughs> few days. <laughs> um, I don't remember why. I think I was seeing a commercial pop up for it. I've seen it on uh, Twitter recommended by a few people. But really, my 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 draw is Sandra Oh, because I used to watch her on Grey's mm-hmm. Anatomy and I haven't seen her on anything in a while and i had briefly just kind of did a skim through of an article about just how impressive she is and i and i really decided to just give one episode a watch and in giving one episode a watch i was hooked and it wasn't just because of sandra oh the entire cast is just to me really really fascinating um like one of the ones that i love the most is uh fiona shaw plays carolyn martins Mm -hmm. Who is kind of like an MI6 sort of up a high woman, but just how like her character and who she is. And I feel like every character has a a depth to them or a curiosity to them or a flaw to them that I haven't really seen exposed and really like um, uh, it's not not the word exploited before. They're really going in and, and sort of exploiting these parts of personality flaws that are it's a really interesting way and also i find that the way that they're doing their storytelling is uh 
really nice for me because they're not doing on the nose. Did you see that? Did you see how we reference that she's, you know, kind of like doing this thing with this book over here? I'm giving a reference that does not give anything away because it's not even the show. But she, she touched the book in this over here. So now the book is going to come into play in three episodes. They don't do that at all. But if you're paying attention, you're like, holy crap. Mm. She was doing that like at the very first episode. She was doing that and they never explained why. You yeah, know? trust the audience. They really are trusting their audience. It's which a very intelligent. It's a very it intelligently is. written show. And I show. think that's another reason why I'm enjoying watching is because there's, sure, there's a mystery going on. Of course, there's like, like where is this going is there too? Um, who are these people to each other, their relationships, and like as they're all kind of coming together and lives are merging, there's some shocking things that happen that you don't, you know, that leave you on a cliffhanger type of a feel um, unless you're binging it and then you can just figure out what happened in 12 minutes. But... <laughs> Um, but overall, I, I it's such a fascinating development. And one of the biggest draws for me is Vin- Villanelle, this highly interesting character. Jody, Jody, uh, Comer, Jody Comer, Comer? Comer? I think Comer or Comer, Comer. Um, she does incredible accents. She's fascinating to watch play this character, uh, even though her character is terrifying um but it's fun to watch her be terrifying in this really weird way i you know people are like you know watch dexter or like watch this other serial killer show and i'll watch it and it's just kind of like it reminds me of like uh i don't know like network tv paint by the numbers but this is something completely different and so i don't know if they're trying to give her heart and soul or if she's an actual psychopath i mean obviously she is but in like what ways and there's just lots of fun interesting conversations to have about this show so i would say it's a record warren definitely I, I i recommend it i think i think most of the cinema sense ob- audience if they're not already enjoying it mm-hmm. would definitely enjoy this i um got my first season i think on uh youtube tv and then i think i had to go to hulu to watch the second season because it's not on youtube tv and then the third season is obviously coming out bit by bit Mm -hmm. right now so um if you do not like to see people uh be murdered in terrible ways do not watch the show (laughs) but (laughs) i mean through i mean that i mean thrillers in general i don't know if that's what that's not really what appeals to me about thrillers by any means but yeah i know what you're saying however if you love watching people be murdered gruesomely (laughs) I, I, I would just it's a it's just a weird thing because you know, like, for example, with some with some shows uh, that I've watched in the past that are kind of more quote unquote murder shows, it's it's like the good guys trying to solve a murder. And and this has that element to it. But it also is sort of we're really like watching the villain do what she does um, and justifying what she's doing because maybe she kills somebody who quote unquote deserves it in our eyes or whatever. And that's an interesting thing that Dexter did. But even Dexter was really like PG compared to this. Like he, 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 Ooh, he had, I just knew that <laughs> he had a, he had a, um, I mean, it's Showtime versus BBC America. So, well, I don't know. Dexter to me was a little bit more predictable, I think is what I'm predictable. saying. Predictable. Yeah. No, Dexter's not a very and good that's show. That's why I'm, I feel like I it's PG you. because you can kind of oh. set, you can kind of set your emotion to it you can kind of set your expectations to it and kind of go yeah. oh i know what's going to happen this episode but, but yeah, this Dexter's one is super gory like let's say you have you have somebody in your life who would get really really triggered from a specific type of seeing someone die a specific way they can't watch this show and know what's going to happen mm-hmm. you ha- you have to kind of go don't watch this episode because this person dies in a way that's really triggering to you because it's like there's just all kinds of horrible death um so i don't know why i'm watching it except for that I'm really because curious what's going to happen with the character a good development. Story is a good story. Yeah, and I don't know how long I'm going to stick to it either because it's right at that tipping point for me where I'm like, okay, are we going to do we have an ending here or are we just going to keep on Thank you. Thank you. Know, you. Thank you. I'm glad you got there well, because I it's I, based on I have books been, too. I have been watching this show uh, since it started uh, in real time. Uh, okay. Fell in love with it very quickly. I think Jodie Comer is amazing. By the way, I love the fact that her character name literally means female villain. Villain L, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is is interesting to me. Uh, the relationship between her and Sandra O oh is absolutely spectacular. The way that yeah. that Sandra O oh is trying to figure out 
what she who identifies she with, who she is. Is she a psycho? Is she, you know, like that, that stuff is, is beautiful. I love how the Fiona Shaw character that you were talking about is mm-hmm. pretty much the buttoned up version of Villanelle in some ways. Like mm-hmm. she's completely distanced from the emotion of any of this stuff. Uh, but we kind of see her as more uh, business-like about it, whereas Villanelle mm-hmm. is more... Um, emotion, like emotion, raw Yeah, emotion. raw about it kind of thing. I love all that. Um, so I really Although felt... I don't know that she's even emotional. That's debatable. But no, we, no, no. But, it's not It's uh, not the emotion of it. It's it's the it's the enthusiasm of it. There there's, you go. Y- there's, yeah, there's enthusiasm to the way she's, she's figuring this out. And I love all that stuff. Fell in love with the first season. Loved where it was going. And obviously the name of the show is Killing Eve. And so you've kind of got this idea of, you know, what we're looking at here. In the second season, I was just like, okay, we're stretching this out a little bit further and two episodes one or two episodes i think two episodes into the third season and i'm just kind of like uh i feel like you're treading water now uh mm-hmm. i feel like you had some momentum in that first season did a lot of interesting things and now you're just stretching it out and it's just like i'm not interested in that i you know like i I've seen all the things you've showed me. Now show me something new. Show me, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how many times I, I can watch I like them kill I, I each think... other or not kill each other and then resurrect each mm-hmm. other or not resurrect each other and be satisfied yeah. with it. So, yeah. yeah, I think like what the show needs to do now is it needs to button things up in a really clever way yeah. that, is, that is intellectual and respects the viewer. Just like I feel like it's been doing to a certain degree, especially season one. Um, if there is a book, Jonathan, like you mentioned, so maybe they've got a, a plan here yeah, no and idea. then and maybe maybe we'll know soon but i don't know if i'm gonna do that thing where i let it sit for a while and then binge it till the end or if i'm gonna watch episode episode. i don't know what i'm gonna do with it right now but it's something completely unexpected i did not expect to watch it um and and even be having this conversation feels a little weird (laughs) but (laughs) but um, but you know i think they need to figure out they they have already established who their quote-unquote bad guys are in the real in this world and i think that's the real mystery is who's pulling the strings and so i'm hoping that they're going to start pulling on those strings a little bit more clearly so we have a feeling of momentum again instead of this sort of swimming motion that we've got right now but anyhow i would recommend it if you guys want to have discussions about it you're welcome to join us on discord you can uh, find links on social media i'm on twitter you're welcome to have a conversation with me there and shame me for watching this show Nobody's going to shame you. Can I just say one thing? I know we're kind of wrapping up, but I watched the first season and there was some stuff at the end of the first season that just, I I, I don't know, it bothered me. And I just, I quit watching after the first season. A lot of the stuff with the handler, uh, with with Villanelle's old handler or whatever, Mm -hmm. that guy. I don't know. I had some issues with some of that stuff and it just kind of bothered me to the point where I didn't really care to watch it anymore. But um, Jodie Comer um, is like she had been in stuff before this. So it's a little different. But I think this is the first thing I had seen her in. Um, She stood out to me like I I don't think I've had anybody just come on a screen and like just overtake it that way since like Margot Robbie in uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Like she's that level. Yeah, she's really, Um, really, really good. I'm really curious to see what she gets to do after this. And I know she's I know she's going to be in that Ryan Reynolds movie if it ever comes out. The free uh, guy, free guy. Yeah, she was also but, Ray's mom in uh, in uh, Rise of Skywalker. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was, uh, which I did not realize until after I saw that movie. But uh, yeah, she's she's unreal. But Sam, but yeah, but nothing to take away from Sandra Oh and Fiona Shaw because they're they're very well established and very, very good actors. No, I but, think the clear standout of this show is Villanelle for me. Yeah. Yep. And I do. I will say I have a hard time with, uh, I have a hard, I, that's one thing I have a hard, I have a hard time getting into fiction. That's really focused on the, the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, even me though too. I know they, well, and I think there's also a problem with that because eventually you have to kind of do the Dexter had this problem. Eventually you have to figure out where you want to go with them. And typically what you end up doing is you making them less of a villain. You create bigger villains so they, but but it's still, it's like, yeah, but I've seen you like brutally murder mm-hmm. like children. So like, I'm never going to get on board with you. <laughs> so you might <laughs> yeah. as well just be bad because <laughs> that, that just, that, that kind of storytelling gets on my nerves. I have not read the books. I just know it's based on books. So I have no idea if they're following those or not. You know, and that might be something I choose yeah. to shift over to just to sort mm-hmm. of give myself a way to like land here. I, I don't need it. You guys have heard me talk about Outlander before where I can leave a complete series at yeah. number seven and be like, this is where I want these people to live forever and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated. I know it's a surprise to, sh- to talk about it, but yeah, um, no, it is interesting it. and it's getting a lot of buzz right now.
right now. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, I just yeah, I the moment where I first realize I'm I'm bored by something is an interesting moment, and it definitely happened mm-hmm. with Killing Eve in one of these first two episodes, where I was like, oh, this is boring me, and I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, I that's, don't like that. That's a hard thing with TV shows because some TV shows do get saved, right? Like mm-hmm. Lost is a pretty good example of that I was never fully off board with Lost. No, I was never was bored during Lost, but there was definitely, and the creators have admitted this, there was definitely like second, third season where they weren't sure how long they were going to be on. They didn't know how much they needed to stretch. And you can feel it. Yep. Like I've rewatched the series. You can feel that moment. Yep. Um, and there's, it, so it's, it's, but that was so captivating. It was, I kept going, but there, there's been plenty of shows where I've, I've walked off just because I just, I don't, yeah. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yeah. My, yeah. You know? Yeah. Entertainment time is a little too precious for me to be bored. You know, like that's just, that's especially that's nowadays. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great stuff, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for Behind the Sins this week. Don't forget to make sure you are subscribed. Uh, you can go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. Hang out with us on Twitter. We're at Cinemasins BTS. Individually, you can DM us. I'm at Aaron Dicer. She is at Danae Says. That's D E N E E S A Y S. And he is at Sam Loomis13. So for Jonathan Watkins, Danae Hughes, and myself, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BehindTheSinsPod at gmail.com. And be sure to subscribe or message us at Twitter. And be sure to visit CinemaSins.com. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Can't see you. Okay, where are you guys? At the Google where Meet. That, that Google Meet the in the calendar. Absolute hell. Why? 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 <laughs> I watched a tutorial on how to cut men's hair because my husband is really like close to asking me to cut his hair for him i'm just glad you finished the sentence with hair you know there are certainly what what other way was i going to finish that sentence i just didn't know if you were having marital problems and and you wanted to cut other things i've heard that happens in oh. uh, situations like, you're about cutting ties <laughs> sure yes ties that's exactly what i was there's yes of course Entertainment Tonight, which I didn't even know still existed, um, was on last night right before Jeopardy. And um, there was a thing on there where somebody was doing online tutorials. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so many. And they were using uh, Christopher Harrison with The Bachelor. Is that his name? Chris Harrison? Uh, It was quality television. Let me tell you. (laughs) More like Chris Hare is none. (laughs) I was waiting for that one. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you got to do the expected because it's expected. It just has a title card. Yeah, that's the same with the SpongeBob stuff we get. Oh, yeah, that's right. Spin- yeah. The SpongeBob. 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 The SpongeBob. I'm only one minute late. Oh, oh, I'm only one minute late. Oh, oh, oh. Just one minute. Don't shoot me. I'm only one minute late. I'm wanting to let you guys know I ate, I ate before starting the show today. Oh, nicely done. Nicely done. Me yeah. too. Oh, we did it. Mine was the marinated steak from uh monday's uh iris birthday dinner Mm. Mm. that's still Mm -hmm. that was still okay like seven days later i mean we've kept it in the refrigerator it's not been sitting out in the sun so fingers crossed (laughs) it's too late now i am living the self-isolation life and had a handful of peanut m&ms for breakfast this morning that's all i've had today (laughs) sweet good (laughs) wait did you say it's all you've eaten today it's all i've eaten today that is dumb Uh uh-huh yeah no i I had five pieces of sausage it's one o'clock in the afternoon. And I understand. Only had a f- oh, I've been hey, busy. can I can, can I mom you for a second? Yes, mom me. No, don't do that. <laughs> Your body deserves better than that. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever sounded so creepy as saying yes, mom me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the intro. There it is. <laughs> Is this so, what you're doing on your own thing, your Patreon? Is that is that D and D related? No, I mean it could be, oh. but it's not right now. This is um, Danae. It's just here's, me. Yeah. Here's Danae. <laughs> so it's mostly ba- eating related. There's a lot of yeah. seductive mustard, you know, that kind of thing. Jesus Lord. <laughs> no, I wanted to tell you that they fought. Like one of the bad guys was Danae, Queen of Tot, mm. and kind of spelled a little bit differently. Ah. And, and my evil spell, I had to when I when I was casting my evil spell, I had to chant Wa Wa Bagaga. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to bring up uh, the hippopotamus tweet. Huh. Did you see that, Aaron? I did. Did you see the video? No, no, no. no. But I know oh. I know hippos are psychos. A gazelle wandered into a uh, hippo area. And I mean, it was bad. Yeah. You don't <laughs> like, want to wander into a hippo area. 
Oh, I just got chills. No, no, no. No, definitely not. That's why when I made that comment, I was like, do not put hippo videos in here. Well, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to block the shit out of you. That's <laughs> the it. part that I really connected with was that particular line because. Well, because I knew like Frank would like find like 30 videos and put them in my, my, uh, my, my thread. Right. Well, and then whenever I talked about being afraid of sharks, that was mm-hmm. my fear. It's like. Sometimes yeah. people misunderstand and they're like, oh, an opportunity to show you a cute picture of like a baby hippo or something. Or yeah. this picture of a shark's not <laughs> so bad. We'll share that one. I have irrational fears, too. In fact, today I was prepping for the show and my husband and daughter went on a uh, a walk around the neighborhood. And when the door opened, I heard the little alarm bell mm-hmm. that dings yeah. whenever we have a door open, like the beep, beep, beep. Yeah, we and so that. I knew they were back and I thought that it was a little bit too quick. And then I heard someone running towards my door. So <laughs> I thought, That's terrible. first of all, my first thought is, oh my God, something happened to Iris and Justin is running mm-hmm. to, to me to tell me something happened. So I go into fight or flight, which I go into fight. I don't I rarely go into flight. I usually go into fight. So I jump up, I run out, I like come around the corner like a movie like mm-hmm. you know and I, ho- I had to hold myself up on the walls to not fall over and there's Iris just happy as can be and Justin's like what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, do you remember when you texted me? Yes, yes. <laughs> it reminded me of that. Yeah, I just have these irrational fears that pop so up. So one time I uh, was, we were working on something, and I I had left, and I texted, uh, I, I just texted goodbye, Danae, or something like that, and <laughs> and she got the text and thought I was I was dying. Like she oh, thought, wow. why would he text me goodbye, Danae? Like you know, and I'm like, what world do you live in <laughs> where I'm dying and I text you? Goodbye, Danae. Like, what world is that? I literally no, don't call nine one one. Don't call my own family. I no, text my be- goes, I text my he, friend goodbye, Danae. He asked me. He asked me. He's like, "What were you thinking?" And I was like, "I don't know," because he texted me and he never texted. Like, that's not Aaron. Aaron doesn't leave the. I think you had left work. Yeah, some. I don't remember where you had left from. But the but the text message to me was really out of place. So in my mind, he had gotten into a, like a vehicular accident. He was hanging upside down, attached to the car, yeah. slowly bleeding out, and texting <laughs> the last someone. Life he had, and he texted. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. I would and, say and I, have... I would say you've seen too many movies, but you haven't. And took the, and took the time to text out your name, even though uh, he was texting right. it to you. Goodbye. To Tell everyone, tell everyone I said goodbye. You know, like the little, like a little bloody mark across the screen. I don't... And it, it was, and as, as the, because I texted back, is everything okay? And he doesn't reply for like 20 minutes because he was driving home and he's yes. a responsible person. So th- that's why, that's why it got really elaborate because over that 20 minutes, the story kept getting worse and worse. I just love the fact that I've I'm got... sitting there like bleeding out and I'm like, I just, I have to get this Asante goo right on the E. I <laughs> yeah. have to, I have to get it right. <laughs> I've gotten better, but I'm not a lot. Not a lot better. I'm still. Oh no! Oh no! You are. You are always in uh, active do something mode. Like you mm-hmm. are. You have uh, hyper vigilance, uh, which yeah, I have a little bit it. as well. Um, Very positive attribute if you use it correctly. If you yeah, use it correctly, yeah. Yeah. No, Aaron, you're right. I am always in hyper vigilance mode, no matter where. Even like going in and sitting down at a restaurant, the first thing I think about is where are the exits, and if somebody comes mm-hmm. in with a gun, how do I get either attack them yeah, or get you out? Told me that before. What are my weapons around me? Like right now, I have this really great sort of like stabby looking piece of uh, equipment here. It's called a pencil. I could totally use it if you I had been to. A cop. I was going to say, no. you would have been, play... been a really good cop. You can I think I that... probably would have been. You can play that game with Danae, with, you know, where you're at a restaurant and you, she'll do that thing where, you know, there's a guy in a blue shirt over in this corner and, you know, you can say, okay, you know, what's, what's color is the shirt of the woman who's sitting behind you and she'll know, you know, like that kind of, yeah. that kind of awareness of the room kind of thing. Or, or she'd be like Terry Crews on Brooklyn Nine-Nine and like her first time out, she would blow like eight holes in a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> She was just like going around the corner. You know what I'm talking about? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes, I that remember was in the pilot, that. I think. Yeah, yeah it that? was. That's why I'm laughing because I oh, actually right, understand we did, that we reference. Because we did Mannequin 2, <laughs> Terry Crews. I remember that now. I don't mind being built this way. There are reasons I'm built this way. They are sometimes considered quite tragic. I don't mind it, though. I don't mind that I want to teach my daughter how to, you know, defend herself. My husband would have. No, of course not. He, 
he's a little bit annoyed with me sometimes. Even yesterday, he was kind of like playfully coming at me with like a wet um, uh, washcloth, and because mm-hmm. I had something on my face, so like I'll get it for you. I was like, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want you to put the wet washcloth on my face. And so then he kind of played into or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I immediately took a fighting stance, and as he backed me into a corner and was like playful, I got more and more aggressive with where I was like kind of play pushing him and play punching him and it got progressively more and I I kept being like okay 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 and then he kind of threw it at my face and instinctively without thinking I just reached up and went pap and like smacked him on the side of his chin not hard but it was completely instinctive to just defend myself oh yeah he's like he goes why are you like this and I was like why are you backing me into a corner you know me (laughs) I'll talk about it on the show more but as long as I'm not like the 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 killer in Killing Eve. As long as I'm not that kooky, we're good. Insane. Are you watching Killing, Killing Eve? Eve? We're good. Um, I kind of binged it over the last few days. All right, well, let's oh. hold that. Let's hold that for uh, let's hold so, that for the show. Yeah, for sure. Are you use Are you talking about that? If you want me to, I have several I can go to, but that's uh, one I can. No, that's about. interesting. I watched the first season of that, and I, I really like the actors, but the show itself. Jonathan, I said, let's hold it oh, for sorry. the show. I was going to say you're about Fine. to get in trouble. Fine. You're about Fine. to get in trouble. But what if she chooses to talk about something else? <laughs> <sighs> you want to guys let's jump in yeah, yeah let's, let's go it. ahead let's uh let's get into the show shall we hello welcome to the show have, where uh, we all have shaggy hair i am so aware of verbal crutches and just like things that that happen all the time just from being in radio and whatever mm-hmm and uh, and it's Insane. annoying, but you work on them or, or you don't yeah, and you just accept them or whatever. I have mine. Oh, yeah. I have tons, uh, including Fascinating, which I've just kind of embraced. Um, but I listen to a podcast and one of the, the guys, every time he mentions a movie or TV show, he says, have you seen this thing? Have you heard of this? Have you heard of this one? <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just Stop like it. it's such it's such an interesting it. way to get into it. It's like, you know, like it, like it's it, a crutch. it could be anything, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming. Have you heard of this movie? And then he goes <laughs> into it. It's just like, yeah, I, I think so. I, I, hey, Aaron, did he cut out for you? No, I again, I think it's on your end today. I think the <laughs> Internet is choking on your end for some reason. Um, did you not have your conversation with Justin? That <laughs> Is that why you hit him? Because you talked to him about the internet? I wonder if we shouldn't play that for the show. I wonder if that's going to be misinterpreted. No, no. In that context, it's it was fine. A now, light, if you were like, by the way, I it was a verbally light, and open-handed my husband fingertip constantly. smack. That's all it was. Hey, listen, all- I've had you've thrown so many things at me over the years. Hey, I know how it is. Whatever yeah. you guys like to do in the bedroom is... <laughs> Completely. It was in the kitchen. Well, Ooh, I mean, kinky. that's a place too. You know, Iris that, taking that a nap. is a place. <laughs> <laughs> How okay, Jonathan so here- identifies uh, possible sexual encounters? Is it a place? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a dude, so yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna prioritize my my office. I'm gonna prioritize my office. Are we still talking about sex? I'm very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Because offices are places. <laughs> That's right. They um, are. Mm-hmm. Honey, I was wondering okay, well, if we could have sex in the, is it a place? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, your your mic sounds fabulous tonight. It does. It really does. I love this mic. Yeah. It's a well, broadcast my bir- mic. My birthday is coming up. It's May oh, okay. <laughs> same as Aaron's. Oh, then uh, I'll forget it. That's right. That's right. Well, same as Lauren Hill's. So that, that's true. Oh, and, Bobcat, and Bobcat Goldthwait. That's right. And John Wayne, Peter Cushing, Steve Hicks. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for mine because now I want to know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know one. Scarlett Johansson. There you go. And we and She's and, uh, about your age, isn't she, too? Um, Yes. She's, yeah. Actually, I think we're, we're really close. But I can't remember her age. I don't. Uh, Mark Ruffalo has the same birthday. How weird is that? Oh, Mark Ruffalo and Scarlett. J- hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis has has my birthday. That's nice. or actually, cool. I guess I should, I have hers since she came she was first. born first. Yeah, 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 yeah. What year were you born today? In okay, yeah. Scarlett is older than you. Yeah, you can just cut that out though. <laughs> wait, wait. I have to know if you're serious. Like yeah, you don't I'm want serious. people to know your age? That's fine. I'm totally no, I, cool with that. I I don't mind it eventually coming out, but I'm really enjoying all of the arguments back and forth about my age right now. All right, so, I'll bleep it. What's that, Aaron? I'll bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> you can shut your face right on up. I'm the fastest pisser in the west. <laughs> okay, I have a new out. 